Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is a story about what if Deku become innocent monster part 1. If you guys enjoy this what if and want to see part 2 comment down below and let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content and live a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also share this video with your friends and check out the description in my playlist. The author of the story little underscore words from AO3. So let's start the video. Come on class. You're middle school seniors. It's time you started thinking seriously about your futures. The teacher shouted over the clamor of noise in the classroom. I'll be handing out printouts on your desired life course. Izuku couldn't help but sink lower into his seat as he carried on writing out notes into his quirk analysis book. You all want to be heroes don't you? The teacher let the printouts scatter as he threw them dramatically. The class meanwhile had broken out into frenzy at the announcement, quirks being used by all the students without care. Yes, yes your quirks are all wonderful, but it's against the rules to use them during school. Huh, Izuka thought, when has that rule ever been enforced? Thinking of a certain individual who made himself known very quickly after the teacher's statement. Sensei, don't lump me in with everybody else. The class quieted down to hear Bakugu. You can't compare me to these losers weak but quirks, mine's a whole other ball game. The noise of the class only picked up after that. You've got a big mouth, Katsuki. One of the students yelled, but it only spurred on Bakugu. Quiet, you goddamn rabble. Izuku's ears picked up on the quiet mumblings of the students closest to him. Oh yeah, I'd forgotten. Bakugu's shooting for Yui High, isn't he? Wah. You mean that national level academy? Isn't its entrance exam difficulty rating as high as 79? Yeah, and it's hyper competitive to get in, right? Bakuga jumped up onto his desk and yelled, You done running your mouth. I got an A on the mock test and I'm the only one at this school who's got a chance. He straightened up and laughed, I'm gonna surpass even that All Might BSTRD as top hero. Izuku was dreading what might be coming next. He tucked his notebook into his backpack and slumped into his seat. Please don't say it, please don't draw attention about it, he silently pleaded. Ah. Now that you mention it, didn't Midoriya want to go to Yui as well? One of his classmates said over the ramblings of the class. The mention of his name and Yui, in one sentence was all it took to quieten the class and silence Bakugu. Izuku was slumped as low into his seat without possibly sliding off it and under the desk. He could feel the eyes on him and the relative emotion of the classroom, amusement and pity. The class erupted into laughter. Ha! Huh. Midoriya! There's no way! If the only thing you can do is study, then heroics is a pipe dream. Izuku finally sat up, th there's nothing wrong with being studious, but he didn't have the chance to say anything more before an explosion ricocheted him from his chair. Eat esicht, Deku! Bakugu shouted, kicking the smoldering desk out of the way as he made his way closer to Izuku. Forget having no quirk, you have a villain's quirk. The class was quiet now, not even the teacher moving to intervene. Tell me, Bakugu said moving closer and closer. Izuku backed up until he felt the wall behind him. Where do you get off putting yourself on the same level as me? Izuku held up his hands, trying to placate Bakugu, H hold on. That's not it. Hold on, Kaken, being on the floor made him look weak but Izuku couldn't risk standing up. Let him look down on you, nothing more than an insect. Don't anger him more. But Izuku noticed how Bakuga's eyes honed in on the palm of his hands, anger and shame and regret swirling around him and overwhelming Izuku who could feel them. He put his hands down. It's not as though I'm trying to compete with you, I wouldn't dream of it. I mean it. He shuffled backwards more. It's just. I've looked to be a hero since I was super young and, and he bowed his head and mumbled quietly, you never know, till you try. Bakuga turned his back to Izuku and faced the rest of their watching classmates. You never know, till you try. The exam is hopeless for someone like you. The classroom's laughter picked up again as Bakugu turned around to face him. What could you accomplish with a quirk like that, villain? Izuku couldn't look anyone in the eye for the rest of the class. 
He had attempted to clean the charred top of his desk as well as he could but a mark, suspiciously like a handprint, was charred into the wood. He sighed as he picked up his backpack and slung it over his shoulder and slunk out of the classroom. Hey, Midoriya. He spun around and came face to face with Kimi Kishimoto. She her head to the side and smiled at him, you should have stood up for yourself more to Bakuga you know. Izuku frowned, well, you could have jumped in any time. Don't you want to be a hero? He huffed and turned on his heel, carrying on walking along the corridor. Students were milling about, catching up with each other, running to clubs. He weaved his way through the crowds until he managed to get outside. Hey, come on now. Kimi said, joining him once again. Me and you against Bakugu. Those odds wouldn't really be in our favor. She shrugged. He could feel the cheeriness radiating from her. Do you really want to be a hero? He asked her. She smiled, and Izuku couldn't help but think that the question caused her happiness to fade slightly. Hmm. She tapped her index finger to her lips. Me as a hero. I'm more likely to make sidekick if that. I'm realistic, Midoriya. My quirk isn't strong or flashy enough to be a hero but I can settle for sidekick. Realistic, huh? He sighed, you'd make a good sidekick. Kids love your quirk don't they? He smiled once he felt her happiness again. Yep. You should see it when my little cousins come over, they love it when I change color. As if to demonstrate to him, Kimmy dug into her school bag and brought out some orange peel. She touched it with her finger and Izuku smiled as he watched her hair morph into the exact color, her nails, eyebrows, lips and irises all changing to match the orange. Color-wielding sidekick, canvas. She shouted, laughter bubbling from her at the same time. Smiling, she walked backwards, her hands behind her back as Izuku carried on walking. With every step the color faded from her leaving her back to normal, white hair and gray eyes. You don't normally walk this way home from school, he mentioned offhandedly. What is it you wanted? Oh, katoned on. She her head to the side and pouted before standing up straight. Izuku could feel that the happiness was still there but mingled with a nervous energy. It's my grandmother. Her hip is causing her a lot of pain and I said I'd put in a good word for her with you, she stopped walking then, waiting for his answer instead. He smiled but it didn't quite reach his eyes. Yeah I could swing around now. She doesn't live too far away if I remember the way correctly. He rubbed the back of his head, you can show me though, right? Ah, uh, he thought, noticing the sudden change in her emotions to awkwardness. Well, you see Midoriya, I said I would meet some of the girls from class. I really should be heading over there. But you know the way and my grandma likes you. Kimi had already started backing away from him. See you later Midoriya, and thanks. You're my hero. She laughed sweetly as she skipped down the street. Oh, Midoriya Kuen. Kimi said you'd pop by, please come in, come in. Kimi's grandmother ushered him into her flat. He kicked his shoes off and placed them neatly by the door. How are you? It's been a while since I've seen you hasn't it? Do you still go to the hospital? Yeah, I still visit the hospital almost. Every weekend. Izuku said, following her into the kitchen. She already had a cup of tea waiting for him at the kitchen table. I bet those nurses still dote on you. She said laughing lightly. It reminded him of Kimi, he felt a smile tug as his lips at the thought. Now, now, don't buy koi with me young man. I know they all appreciate your volunteering there. Izuku felt the blush on his cheeks reach his ears. Ah, uh, I don't really do that much. Just read to the kids and visit the, the urn. Oldies. She laughed again at his expression. He smiled as he stared into his tea, Kimi is very much like her grandmother. I'm glad you still go. I'd be in a lot more pain if I hadn't have met you that time. He looked up at her watching her wince slightly as she eased herself into the seat opposite. Said they can't do anything about the pain. Ha! Huh. Little do they know about the magic of your quirk. He could feel the earnestness of her statement. 
His smile shakily, yeah, they don't really know about that, he said rubbing the back of his head. I won't tell, mum's the word. She winked at him. Izuku smiled again and sipped his tea. Can't you have a doctor with a healing quirk come in here and fix me up? I need to hurry up home and feed the cat. Mrs. Kishimoto, your family said they would look after your cat while you rest up here. And you know that there's not much we can do apart from give you some more painkillers. You've just had surgery, you're bound to be in a little bit of pain. Izuku had overheard the conversation from the curtain he was behind. Has she been here long? He asked Mr. Fumimaro as he moved his chess piece to take one of the old man's. Mr. Fumimaro frowned at Izuku's move, countering it with one of his own. Oh her. She was moved into this room yesterday. If you can do something about her, we'd all be grateful. The old man looked up at him and winked. Oh. Izuku looked over his shoulder at the curtain in which Mrs. Kishimoto was behind. Yeah, I'll see what I can do. But no telling on me. Why I would never. Mr. Fumimaro sounded aghast that Izuku would say such a thing. Izuku smiled, checkmate. He said cheerily before standing up. Would you like me to pack this up? He said gesturing to the board. No. No. I want to go over how you won that. Mr. Fumimaro said frowning. Izuka moved to stand in front of Mrs. Kishimoto's curtain, which kept her obscured from the rest of the others in the room. He took a deep breath in and out before gently tapping on the curtain. Mrs. Kishimoto, do you mind if speak to you? Izuku said loudly enough for her to hear. Some of the others in the room turned to watch him but went back to their business moments later. Sure. He heard her cheery voice through the curtain. Izuku ducked around it and sat in one of the chairs next to her bed. Hello, Mrs. Kishimoto. My name is Midoriya Izuku, I volunteer at the hospital and my, what a speech. She said smiling. What can I do for you Midoriya kun Her white hair was cut short and her gray eyes shone with masked pain. There was something about her that Izuku recognized. Are you related to Kimi Kishimoto by any chance? He asked her. She smiled at him gently. Why she's my granddaughter. You must be in her class. Izuku nodded his confirmation. Why, she's never mentioned you. Ah, I'm not really worth mentioning, he trailed off awkwardly. He looked around the bedside table and noticed the large bouquet of flowers. She noticed him looking at them. From the family. They popped over yesterday and they should be around tomorrow. Hopefully they're feeding the cat, oh, what's your cat called? Izuku said jumping onto the new topic. My little ball of fluff is called Miso. Kimi named him that when I adopted him as a kitten many years ago. She laughed airily. He's good company, and he adores Kimi so I know he'll be looked after. I just wish I wasn't going to be in here for so long and with this pain well it looks like it'll be weeks before I'm out and can see him again. She sighed heavily. Ah. Well, Izuka bit his bottom lip. He always felt nervous telling anyone about his quirk. One, he shouldn't exactly be using his quirk anyway, and two. It didn't always garner the best reactions. Yes, dear what is it? Mrs. Kishimoto encouraged him. I can help with the pain. Izuka whispered. She raised her eyebrows at him inquisitively. I can, erm, um, I can take the pain away so you won't feel it anymore. That's your quirk. She said just as quietly as Izuku has spoken. It's half of it, he shrugged. I can absorb the pain of people I touch and store it within me. Then you end up feeling that pain as well. She asked. Izuku could feel concern radiating from her. Well, sort of. You feel the pain in a concentrated place right? For example, your hip, but when I absorb your pain, it disperses around my entire body. He shrugged again. It means I don't really feel it at all. She stared at him silently. Izuku could feel her emotions, concern standing out but there was sadness, nervousness and a slight bit of excitement as well. You don't have to do it. 
he said waving his hands in front of him, it's just I thought I'd offer it considering your hip and all. The others in the room have dabbled once or twice. He said scratching the back of his head then looked down into his lap. He didn't want to see the expression she might be wearing. You wonderful boy, she said suddenly. Izuku looked up to see her smiling at him sadly. Is that why you volunteer at the hospital? I, he fiddles with his hands in his lap. My dad used to work here. He had the same quirk. He. He helped a lot of people with it so I'd like to do the same. You want to be a doctor? Izuku looked up at her, I want to be a hero. He whispered. Well, unless you wanted to stay for dinner shall we get down to business? Mrs. Kishimoto smiled at him. She'd finished drying their cups and turned back to face Izuku who'd been stroking a happily purring miso on his lap. Sure. He said smiling at her. She sat down again at the table and offered her hand out to Izuku. He looked at her hand for a moment before extending out his own and placing it on top. He felt his quirk activate instantly on contact. Mrs. Kishimoto's anxiety was the first thing he noticed, he willed it to go away, for her to be calm. Immediately Izuku could see on Mrs. Kishimoto's face that his quirk was already starting to work. Time to move on to the real show, he thought as he concentrated on the pain he could feel from her. The pain spiked initially and he watched as black tendrils spread up his arms before they disappeared from view, hidden by his uniform. The pain began to fade into a dull ache before nothing at all. He watched as the black tendrils faded to gray then nothing. He pulled his hand away, breaking the connection. Oh, Izuku. Thank you so much. She exclaimed happily. I feel as sprightly as a lamb now. She laughed as she stood up and moved freely without the pain in her hip bothering her. You should still go to the hospital. You know I can only take pain away, not heal. I know, I know. She smiled at him. If you must know, I'm scheduled for a visit next week. How long will it take for the pain to start returning? She asked him conversationally. Izuku went back to stroking Miso, hmm. Well it felt like I absorbed a lot, so it should be a week or so before you start feeling something again in your hip. But because you're feeling something means then you should. Probably tell the hospital. Izuku looked at her with a mock stern face. Yes doctor. She said smiling at him. By Mrs. Kishimoto, by Miso. Izuku waved at them before he made his way down the stairs. He saw Mrs. Kishimoto holding Miso, making the cat wave bye to Izuku with his paw before closing the door. He supposed he was grateful that Mrs. Kishimoto didn't live too far away from the school, it would only take an extra 15 minutes to get home then if he was walking back from school like normal. He sent a quick text to his mother letting her know that he was homeward bound before he entered the tunnel. He had only stepped a few feet into it before he heard the rumbling coming from the manhole he'd just passed. Izuku looked over his shoulder to the manhole to find a green slime emerging from it. His eyes widened in fear as the slime began to speak. Well, what do we have here? I guess you're a medium in size, Izuku had no time to react before the slime enveloped him. It covered his mouth and nose, suffocating him. No 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 no. The thought kept spiraling around him. It's okay kid. I'm just gonna use your body for a bit, so cool it. Izuku struggled but it was useless, he couldn't breathe and struggling only seemed to worsen the situation. The villain moved one of its eyes so it was looking directly at him while the other was keeping watch. You'll only hurt for 45 seconds, soon it'll all be over. You really are my hero kid. And was all Izuku could say. He tried to claw at the slime villain but he laughed at Izuku's attempts. You can't grab a hold of me, I'm amorphous. He laughed as Izuku felt the slime entering deeper down his throat. I can't breath. Tears sprung to his eyes. My body it hurts. I'm dying. I'm dying a calm came over Izuku suddenly. He closed his eyes and breathed in deeply. It was over in a second, slime covered the walls, floor and ceiling of the tunnel. Izuku put two fingers in his mouth and threw up what had been making its way down into him. 
He coughed and rubbed his throat as he looked at his handiwork with apathy before picking up his backpack where it had fallen, he grimaced at the state it was in, soaked with slime and smelling foul. He reached in regardless and dug out his water bottle. He swillied the water in his mouth before spitting it out. He gulped down the next sip of water he took. Come on. Izuku whispered tapping his foot impatiently, come on. He smiled as he watched the slime slowly form itself again. Ah, what a relief, I thought I'd killed you. He is head to the side as he watched the slime villain fully form. Oh you're gonna get it now brat. The villain was about to surge forward again before Izuku held up a hand causing him to pause. Now, now. If you touch me again I'll splatter you across the walls, again. The villain hesitated. You know, I have to thank you, no honestly I do. It's been a while since I've used this side of my quirk and I do get a rush from it. Izuku strolled forward nonchalantly, his smile widening when he saw the villain back up slightly. I don't take kindly to you bringing trouble around here when this is my territory. A bluff, but the villain wasn't to know that, for all he knows, I run this whole neighborhood. Look, I didn't know you were a villain, kid. I've not heard of you. The smarter villains don't need to be known. He responded coolly. Who was chasing you? The slime villain eyed him suspiciously. How did you you gonna help me? Izuku shrugged in response. What are you offering in return? The slime villain hesitated for a moment before answering, I robbed a place, left the money back in the sewers. We can split it 30 seventieths if you help me out of this. Izuku raised an eyebrow. I supposed I'll be getting the 70%. The slime villain went to open his mouth but Izuku held up his hand, I hear rumbling. He looked to the drain in time to see the top fly off. He dodged it as it careened past him and watched as a hero emerged, oh my. All Might was after you. He said turning to face the slime villain grimacing, thanks for telling me where the money is though. He winked at the villain as All Might's voice boomed through the tunnel. Have no fear, boy. For I'm here. Izuku stepped away from the villain as he recognized All Might's stance shift. Texas smash. Izuku surged forward at the same time All Might threw the punch. He gripped the open manhole by All Might's feet as the wind pressure shoot everything in the tunnel out the opposite end, he even felt himself lifted from the ground slightly. OMF. The sound made its way out of his mouth as his body hit the floor. He turned to look over his shoulder but All Might seemed to be distracted detaining the villain in, soda bottles. Izuku shook his head slightly in bafflement. Seeing as he's busy, I'll make myself busy as well, he took one last look at All Might before he hoisted himself into the sewer. Toshinori finished bottling the villain and went to go ensure the boy was okay but found there was no one there. Strange, he thought, the kid had dove straight by his feet near the manhole when he threw the punch but now he wasn't anywhere to be seen. He entered the tunnel, a soda bottle under each arm. Hello. Young man are you here? He moved until he was above the open manhole and bent down slightly. TCH, he moved backwards as the young boy climbed out the manhole rubbing his forehead. What are you doing leaning over the manhole like that? You could have knocked me out. The boy mumbled. Toshinori, for his part, had barely felt the bump to his forehead as they clashed but did feel sorry for the boy in front of him. He maneuvered the bottles so both were under one arm, with his free arm he grabbed the boy's backpack and lifted him out of the manhole. He had to stop a chuckle escaping him as he envisioned it much like a claw machine picking up a toy. Instead he covered the chuckle in a cough. Let's get you out of this tunnel. He pushed the manhole cover closed with his foot and continued to carry the boy via his backpack until they were outside of the tunnel's gloominess. He settled the boy down gently, now let's have a look at you, need to make sure you're not too banged up by this villain. He looked at the young man. His uniform was slightly disheveled, his white school shirt and yellow backpack somewhat stained but nothing worse for wear. What did make him pause was the boy himself. He seemed too calm, bored in fact. The color of his irises was completely black, which, as much as Toshinori didn't want to admit, made him feel uneasy. The messy mop of black hair seemed to contain small bits of slime as well. Did the villain harm you? 
he asked as gently as he could. The boy's eyes flicked to the bottles then back to all might. He did try to suffocate me, yes. But after a discussion we came to an impasse where he said he'd give me all the money he stole from wherever. Toshinori's eyes widened in shock as the boy swung his backpack to his front and unzipped it, mingled in with the normal everyday school items was the stolen cash. He told me where to find it. Shrugging the boy zipped the backpack back up and swung it over his shoulder. I would give you the backpack but it's my only one and it has all my school work in it. I can hand the cash into the police with you though. He said it so calmly that the confusion Toshinori was feeling must have spread to his face, as he watched the boy pee pee his head to the side. My boy, you're coping with this very well. I think you might be in. Shock, I'll call an ambulance for you. Honestly there's no need. He said, shaking his head. It's my quirk. Toshinori went to open his mouth but the boy beat him to it. I know, it's illegal but the law states that the use of a quirk is permitted when your life is in immediate danger, in layman terms anyway. The boy gestured to the soda bottles under All Might's arm. I call being almost suffocated as immediate danger. Well, I have to say, with your help I've shut him into these bottles and I'll ensure he's not an immediate danger to anyone else. He smiled brightly and looked at the boy, who wasn't showing much of a response. Can I ask that you transfer the stolen money into this here shopping bag? That way it will avoid you having to lose your backpack. He moved the soda bottles to the pockets of his before handing the plastic bag to the boy. He watched the boy, currently crouched, move the money methodically from one bag to another. He needed to leave, he could feel the pain in his side and he knew his time limit was nearing its end, but he knew he should at least ask the kid for a name, out of politeness. May I ask you for your name? Midoriya Izuku. The boy, Midoriya, answered. He stood up and handed him the plastic shopping bag tied up at the top. Here. Once again, I need to thank you me, he watched as Midoriya began changing before his eyes. His hair began to turn to a dark green, but the black was still there mingled in. His eyes, the black eyes, so dark and void of anything, began to change. The black shrinking back to a pupil, and a green iris bloomed instead. The boy stumbled backwards, holding his head, ah, I'm sorry. Toshinori hesitated before he took a step forward towards the boy, he seemed to have recovered, though Toshinori noted that he looked more tired than before. The boy put his hands out in front of him waving them back and forth, I'm okay, I'm okay. I just overused my quirk a little. Toshinori knew his time was almost up. The boy seemed fine enough and all Toshinori could do was hope he could make it home safely. Well, he began to move away from the boy, turning around readying himself to launch. I'm off to deliver this perpetrator to the authorities. When we meet next it'll be through a TV screen. Ah! Already! You, can't stay, he heard the boy say longingly. He crouched as he replied, pros must do battle with villains and time itself. Now then, be sure to keep cheering me oh Owen. Toshinori launched himself into the air but he felt an extra weight wrapped around one of his legs. Ah! What the? Kid! Toshinori tried to shake the boy off but he only gripped tighter. Let go! If, if I let go, now! I'll die! He could just about hear the boy over the rushing of the wind. Actually! I wanted to consult you. I need to ask you, okay, okay, I understand, so please close your eyes and mouth. He stifled a cough into his fist and frowned at the coppery taste of BLD in his mouth. Katsuki stomped down the street with barely self-contained anger. How dare Deku think he could apply to UA? With a freaky quirk like that, no way would that school even bat an eye at him. He could feel the explosions just under his skin itching to burst forth. And his hands it's like he knew showing me those scars would PSS me off even more. They barely interacted anymore, not after what happened when Deku discovered the other half of his quirk. Not to mention he barely ever used it, basically making him a quirkless loser in class. He's your childhood friend, ain't he? One of the kids from school that followed Katsuki around like a lost dog said. Pfft, he was a childhood nuisance. 
Katsuki growled back. Always on the verge of tears. Tears that normally I caused he shook his head to quell the thoughts. You almost overdid it today, man. The other extra said, taking a drag of a cigarette. That desk is gonna be a constant reminder to him to be quiet, hey, Bakugu. Katsuki stormed further forward, frustrated he kicked at an empty can. It's his fault for getting in my way. He still got that stupid dreamy expression from back then. And the fact that he keeps trying. Just seeing him me off. He clenched his fist causing a small amount of explosions to occur. And another thing, he whirled around to face the boys behind him. Didn't I tell you to quit smoking? If we're found out, my recommendation letter will catch a flame too, both of them had a dumbfounded expression on their face which Katsuki couldn't figure out why until, lo, look. Long fingers extended his index finger shakily. Katsuki swirled around just in time to come face to face with a wall of slime. Toshinori Yagi was truly not having much luck today. The kid, Midoriya, having latched onto his leg, seemed to be experiencing motion sickness. I say, I really don't have the time to chit-chat. He didn't mean to be so snappy, but he also didn't appreciate his legs being used as a form of transportation. And, not to mention, his time in this form was coming to an end for the day. He made to move, another jump or two should take me to the closest police station. As he reached the railing, Midoriya called out, wait. Um. The question I wanted to ask you, no. I can't. I need to go now, I've spent too much time dallying. Toshinori snapped, but the boy continued regardless. Can someone's whose quirk, whose quirk is villainous. Can they become a hero? The boy's voice was so timid. Can a person like me be like you someday? Toshinori stilled. He gripped the railing strong enough that it dented beneath his closed fists, pain causing him to tense involuntarily. Steam was rising off of him in plumes, but from what he could see of the boy, he was staring at his feet and hadn't yet noticed. My quirk. It's, it's not a quirk people like. The kids at school who know about it won't come near me. Others, they think I'm quirkless because I don't use it. But, despite it all, I want to be like the people I look up to in my life, I want to save people, with a laugh and smile, and wah. Not the most eloquent reaction to my form, Toshinori thought. Are you okay? Ah, uh, of course not. I can feel that you're in pain. Now that, Toshinori realized, was not what he was expecting to come from the young boy's mouth. He was about to respond but thought better of it, he swallowed back the BLD in building in his mouth. The boy edged closer to him, and Toshinori held his hand up to stop him. I am still all might. He began, the form you saw before, was something I can no longer maintain for long, he sat down, just to rest for a moment, to let the pain pass, he thought. Since you've seen my true form, he hesitated, he wasn't entirely sure why he felt compelled to tell this kid the truth, but Toshinori lifted his shirt up slightly anyway. This is a wound a villain gave me five years ago. My respiratory system is a shamble and my stomach was totally scooped out, the words seemed to be tumbling out of him, I've wasted away from constant surgeries and their complications, and I've been reduced to a maximum of around three hours of heroics every day. He looked up at the boy, expecting some horror on his face but there was simply a deep sadness in his eyes. You say you have a villain's quirk, my boy, but could you ever picture yourself doing this? The boy edged closer to him, his head to the side as he crouched in front of the hero. Five years ago. Was it your fight with Super Venom Chainsaw? He felt a smile creep onto his face. Ha! Huh. Like a thug like that. Could do squat to me. He stared at the boy, I haven't told the public about my condition, so I ask you to respect my wishes and keep quiet. The boy nodded solemnly. That symbol of peace, who always rescues people with a smile, must never succumb to the forces of evil. He sighed heavily, continuing with what he needed to say, the reason I laugh is to deceive myself and distract from the pressure and terror that dwells within me. Toshinori saw the boy's eyes widen slightly at the revelation. You have a quirk, but you and your peers don't like it. Then you don't have the confidence and assertiveness to place your life on the line and rescue others. 
he stood up suddenly and dusted himself off. If you aspire to save people, there's always the police force or even a doctor. As he walked to the entrance of the stairwell he looked back at the kid, you don't have to stop dreaming, kid, but you need to see reality for what it is. And with that, he left. Tashinori stopped halfway down the stairwell. Perhaps I shouldn't have been so harsh to the boy, I never really saw the extent of his quirk. He shook his head and carried on down the stairs. Now to drop the villain off, except when he tapped his pockets only the plastic bag of money was to be found, the bottles were no longer present. He was about to turn around and head back up to the roof thinking they were perhaps up there when the window he passed rattled slightly. No, was all he could think as a plume of smoke rose in the distance. He was tiring but like hell was he about to let some but slime villain use him. He released more explosions, the fires catching onto anything as the slime villain forced his arms and hands into those directions. Why isn't anyone helping me? Why aren't they helping me? Why aren't I strong enough? He could hear the heroes shouting at him to keep calm, that someone equipped to handle the situation is coming. Help me. I can't hold on forever. This green jello is going use my body until it can't be stopped. Help me now. Izuku walked down the street slowly. He had stayed on the rooftop staring after all night long after he left before he finally managed to kick himself into gear again. He didn't want to go home, not yet anyway. He needed time to process what had happened. What had happened? He thought. I met All Might and he said I can't be a hero, not if I'm afraid. I need to see reality for what that is. He stopped walking and blinked strong. Don't cry. Don't cry. He balled his hands into fists and pressed them into his eyes. Breathe. In and out. Breathe. He felt his quirk stirring, and he was half tempted to let it take over. No, calm down and keeping walking. He let his hands fall to his sides as he sighed. Shaking his head, he hoisted up his backpack and carried on walking. His feet didn't take him in any particular direction, and he didn't have a destination in mind, but just to walk until his quirk calmed down and his brain wasn't so frazzled. He turned the corner to the shopping district and saw a crowd on the opposite side. He turned to face them wondering what was causing such a commotion when he spotted it. Oh, him again. Izuku immersed himself into the crowd to truly make sure of what he was seeing. How? He thought. Did All Might drop him? He felt sick with the realization. He was in the trouser pockets. I grabbed his legs and the bottles must have been dislodged. Why are all the heroes at a standstill? Izuku tuned into the conversation around him. The guys got some middle school kid hostage. He swallowed someone else. They won't be able to bear that excruciating pain. This is my fault, All Might is out of action now and the villain can't be captured. They need to wait for a hero that has a quirk that'll work against him Izuku let his quirk wash over him. He felt the panic and fear disappear to be replaced with the calmness and clarity he needed. His heightened senses picked up on an influx of sensory data, and his eyes finally locked onto the slime villain's newest victim. Bakugu. Izuku made his way to the front of the crowd easily, the blockade of heroes and police were keeping the general public away from the ramaging villain slash Bakugu combo. Excuse me, a police officer looked over at him. Yes, you'll do. The officer came closer to him and frowned slightly. Please, we ask that you stay behind the heroes and officers. We are dealing with the situation. Izuku his head to the side, hmm, are you? The police officer was about to open her mouth to respond but Izuku didn't give her the chance. Look, that's my friend over there. Her face immediately showed her sadness, I'm sorry, but we are doing our best to rescue your friend and ask that you remain calm and stay behind the blockade. Oh, no sorry, I don't mean the angry blonde, I'm talking about the big green slimy one. He smiled widely at her showing his teeth, almost baring them. The police officer stared at him then glanced over her shoulder and that was all the opening Izuku needed. His quirk allowed him to move faster than he normally would, dodging anyone that would try to grab him. Somebody stop that kid. 
But Izuku was already too far away from the crowd and too close to the slime villain who was now taking notice of him. Yo! Izuku said happily, holding up a hand in greeting. The slime villain's combination with Bakugu had almost destroyed the street. You two make a wonderful couple, much better than we would have, don't you think? You got me caught. I'm going to kill you using this kid's power, I'm gonna blow you to bits. Izuku for his part his head to the side in contemplation. Hmm. But I rescued you, pretty rude to do that to your hero. He winked at the villain as he straightened up. Come on, why do you think I grabbed All Might's legs? It dislodged you from the bottles and freed you. It was a bluff, but the slime villain wasn't to know that, hopefully, Izuku thought. The slime villain stretched up, so tall. Izuku felt rather small but smiled. Smaller the target, the harder to hit. Where's the money? You took it I know you did, so where is it? Still smiling he took off his backpack and held it up. It's all in here, Izuku swung the backpack back and forth, building up velocity. I need to time this right or I really will have to use the full extent of my quirk. Not that he had any issue of redistributing and redirecting pain to anyone in this form, but he'd get in a lot of trouble with the police and the heroes if he started using his quirk to the full extent. They don't know I'm using it right now, I could just look like this normally. The other issue Izuku noted, though this wasn't too pressing on him, was that Bakuga might get caught in the crossfire. Sure the slime villain can take a full blast of condensed pain, but with Bakugu wrapped up in all that slime he could feel it as well. That wouldn't be great, enough pain in a person's system could kill them, so here he was swngng his backpack waiting for the right moment. The slime villain leaned forward, and with him Bakugu did as well. Perfect. Izuku let go of the bag, which hit the slime villain full force in the eye, causing him to lean back, Izuku at the same time leaned forward and grabbed Bakugu. He pulled with the extra strength allowed in his quirk-induced form. Why are you? Bakuga's anger and confusion was all Izuku needed to spur himself on and pull the boy free. Because you couldn't. Izuku said as he pulled Bakugu up from the pavement where he had stumbled out of the slime villain. And grabbed him by his upper arm and pulled him behind him. The slime villain was forming himself in writhing shapes, Izuku knew he had him off now but it was worth it. Smiling, he changed his stance ready to fight as the slime towered over Bakugu and him but he never had the chance. All Might's voice carried over the crowd as he jumped to stand next to Izuku. I chewed you out for something I nearly didn't put into practice. A pro always puts their life on the line to save others. All Might smiled down at them both and offered an arm, Izuku understood what he meant, hold on. So, he grabbed All Might's arm with one hand and Bakugu with another as the number one hero delivered his famed Detroit smash move into the slime villain. The wind pressure spiraled upwards into the sky and Izuku felt the first patters of rain on his cheeks. Is it okay to cry now? His quirk had left him as soon as he saw the villain was no longer a threat and instead piles of green mass strewn across the street. He felt exhausted. Izuku was still holding onto All Might's arm, he could feel it trembling, could feel the happiness and relief that flooded through the hero but there was also pain. Izuku bit his lip before making the decision to activate his quirk again, not moving his hand off of the hero's arm. All Might looked down, his smile was still there but his eyes were wide with realization that the pain was lessening in his body, as a thank you. Izuku whispered as his eyes went back to watching the black tendrils of pain move from All Might's body to his. I'm not a pro, but I can't turn my back on people who need me, need help that is. All Might moved Izuku's hand off his arm and cupped them in his own hands. Turning his quirk off, Izuku looked up to All Might to see a radiant smile on his face. The hero looked to say something when the other heroes, police and a few medics came rushing over to them. All Might was guided away to the press while Izuku was stuck with being scolded. What were you thinking, kid? You had no reason to rush headlong into danger like that. Izuku ducked his head in shame. You could have made the situation worse. He let the words tumble over him as he saw Bakugu, looking annoyed at being looked over by a medic and swarmed by heroes as well. They don't seem to be telling him off. Izuku sighed in relief, 
The last thing he wanted was Bakugu getting in trouble for his reckless plan. But it wasn't reckless, it was calculated and I knew it would work. Izuku was drawn back into the real world as an officer and a medic came over to him. Hi, he smiled kindly at Izuku who responded one in turn, though more sheepishly. I'm Detective Tsukachi Naomesa. An officer reported that you knew the villain. Izuku opened and closed his mouth several times before sighing, now that wasn't very calculated. Yeah, we had a run-in earlier when I was walking home, but All Might came and saved me. He shifted back and forth onto each foot. How much do I tell him? I wasn't exactly lying just omitting the details. Hmm. Well if that's the case, I'll speak to All Might about it then. Thank you for your time, he waited for Izuku to give him his name. Oh. Midoriya Izuku. The officer smiled again. Here, he said holding out Izuku's yellow backpack, which was now even more slime covered. Everything is back in there. Have the medic check you for any injuries then head home, okay? Izuku nodded his understanding. He watched as the detective made his way over to the crowd surrounding All Might and started to lead him away. Izuku. He turned his head and for the second time smiled sheepishly. Hi Ms. Nita. I didn't know you were working today. He tried to sound nonchalant but she wasn't having any of it. The medic placed a hand on his head and closed her eyes. Izuku felt a strange tingling sensation occur all over his body then it stopped. He looked back up at Ms. Nita who nodded at him. You're all good, just tired and no wonder, taking on villains. Izuku what were you thinking? That's dangerous stuff even for a pro. I won't tell your mum but you better or come Monday morning when she's in the office I'll be exaggerating the story. Izuka's mouth hung open slightly until his brain caught up with him. Please, please don't tell her. I'll walk straight home now and do it. I beg you, please don't. She laughed at his begging and Izuku felt himself smiling as well, her happiness radiating into him. Okay, okay, she held up her hands, I won't. But head straight home, okay. Maybe make her tea before you go about explaining why you're getting home so late. She winked at him before heading off. Izuku sighed, he shouldered his disheveled yellow backpack and headed home. He sent a text to his mother that he'd be home soon, that he'd got caught up in some things and he'd explain them to her after dinner. It was the least I could do, he thought pocketing his phone, thankful that it had survived the day's events. His mind began to wander again, to all might and the rooftop. I should have apologized for causing such a mess. I wonder how I can contact him, maybe I can leave a message on his homepage. DKU. The suddenness of being called out didn't surprise him, he could feel Kakan's anger before the boy had even said a word. Izuku turned to face him. I never asked you to save me. I didn't need you to save me. I saved myself because, because I could. Okay. Like I'd let some villain colluding loser think they can get points for being a good guy by saving me. Ha. Huh. Don't think I owe you anything. Izuku for his part stayed quiet as he watched Kakan turn around and head in the direction of his home, don't you dare look down on me. How can I when I only look up to you? Izuku watched Kakan's retreating form before turning around and heading to his home. He was tired, having never used both sides of his quirk so many times in one day. I've not used hide in so long, it felt strange, Izuku's musings came to a halt at the sudden appearance of All Might. All Might. I thought you were surrounded by the press. Didn't a detective come speak to you? Izuku watched as All Might's form shrank in a cloud of steam, something that early today caused him to panic, but now it seemed second nature. Oh, Naomesa and I are friends, he got me out of there with the excuse I needed to fill in forms. All Might rubbed the back of his head, not really an excuse, I do need to go to the station and fill in a report, not to mention hand in the stolen money. Anyway I came here to thank you, and to set the record straight. Izuku shook his head. No, I should be thanking you, you saved me twice and I wanted to apologize. None of this would have happened if I hadn't grabbed onto you and I wanted to apologize for using my quirk on you as well, I shouldn't have done that without your permission. Whoa, kid. Breathe. 
All Might rubbed the back of his head, and then let his hand fall back to his side. I get it, you feel guilty for what happened today, and so do I. All Might held up a hand to stop him from interrupting. I shouldn't have been so careless taking the villain into my custody, the blame lies with me. Sometimes you underestimate the strength of others. I did that to the slime villain, and I did that with you too. Izuka shook his head ready to rebut the words but All Might carried on. If we hadn't have met, I believe I would have forgotten my own words, no, Izuka finally spoke up. I shouldn't have interfered. I could have caused so much more trouble for everyone one. But you didn't. All Might said truthfully. Izuku could feel pride washing over him from All Might. Of all the people there, only you made the difference. You are the one who made me act. All Might stepped closer to Izuku, there's something that said about certain heroes, their bodies moved before they could think. I believe that you saw your friend in danger, danger you'd already experienced, and you moved to save him. Izuku felt the tears build up in his eyes. All I wanted was someone to say this to me again. Please All Might say it. Izuku looked up at All Might, his hero, as he stood tall. Midoriya Izuku, you can become a hero. Izuku felt the tears roll down his cheeks as he stared at the hero. Again and again, one memory came to mind. His dad crouching down and smiling at him, of course you can be a hero, Izuku. And now, eleven years later, someone was telling him the same thing and not just anyone. All Might stood watching and waiting as Izuku wiped his eyes with the back of his hand, noticing that the hero was feeling somewhat awkward about the display. I'm sorry, Izuku laughed shakily, it's been a very long and odd day. All Might nodded his agreement, and I believe you might find this day will get odder still. And as if he could sense Izuku's foreboding, the hero stepped forward, closer to Izuku, I think it's you who is worthy of inheriting my strength. And once again Izuku felt his mind go blank but he knew he should say something to the hero who was waiting for a response, yes. Izuku closed his eyes and bit his lip in embarrassment while All Might laughed. Not a very eloquent answer now, was it? That response was very forward. Izuku opened his eyes to see the hero smiling at him, it's just a suggestion for now as the true test is yet to come. The hero pointed down at him, his blue eyes almost glowing, it's a matter of whether or not you try your hardest to absorb my power and the responsibilities that come with it. Ah, uh, there's the BLD again, Izuku thought worriedly but the hero seemed to think nothing of it as he wiped it away. I'm talking about my quirk, you know. His quirk. There's always been speculations of my quirk but it's simply listed as a run-of-the-mill generic boost of super strength. I evade the topic in order to protect my secret. I know a thing about that, Izuku thought, his brain finally processing everything All Might was saying. Your secret. You see it wouldn't do if people knew that the almighty symbol of peace wasn't born a natural hero. All Might raised an eyebrow at him. Wasn't born a hero. My quirk is a power that can be passed from one to another, much like a sacred torch. Okay. Izuku shook his head, okay. Right. Yes a quirk you can inherit. Yes. So you can give it to someone, me. If All Might had noticed that Izuku was currently having an internal meltdown he chose not to say anything. That's right, kid. I've tagged you as the next in line. How can he say it so normally? Izuku was now having a million thoughts a minute which he ended up voicing aloud. Okay. Okay. Wait hold on. No, that's not right. How can you pass a quirk like that on without a genetic link, like mother to son? I can't understand I don't understand I've never heard of such a thing. Everyone has their own individual inborn traits that make up a quirk and it's established and there's science and facts and how. The words tumbled out of him incoherently, and he looked to All Might for more of an explanation but the hero seemed as confused as Izuku. Geez, enough kid. Don't immediately dismiss the possibility just because it's not in some book. Think of all the quirks in this world, is it really so strong to believe one can't be passed to another of their choosing? Izuku ran a hand through his hair, causing it to stick up in even more directions, not that he noticed. It's the power to transfer power, 
and the name of this ability that I have been entrusted with is none other than one for all. The hero held his hand out, palm open. One for all, Izuku shook his head to clear it again. I don't. I don't understand, All Might clenched his open palm into a fist, one man cultivates the power, they are the seed, who then plants the power in another and again it grows and is passed down once again, until it continues to bloom into a power that can save lives. No, Izuku said shaking his head, no, I understand that. What I don't understand is, why are you giving your quirk to someone like me? I... I already have a quirk. As did many of the people who held this power before me. All Might waggled a finger at him. I've been searching for a successor for many years, since the incident that caused this injury. And now, I've finally come across someone who I wouldn't mind giving it to. Izuku looked down at his shoes, he shifted from one foot to the other. All Might's emotions making him feel uncomfortable with the praise. You, who despite telling me you did not like the quirk you have, used it and ended up outshining all the other so-called heroes, at the scene. Izuku felt his eyes watering again so he blinked furiously to stop the tears from falling. Hey, kid, it's still your decision to make of course. I only offer this to you because I can tell you have a good heart, and an innate need to help others. A true hero if I ever saw one. Izuku let the tears fall then, and as he saw All Might smile, felt the proudness radiating from him. Realistically he knew he needed to think about this decision, it would be life-changing to take on another quirk, let alone the one belonging to All Might. Mum would know something was up, can I tell her about this? I want to say yes, provisionally. This is something that I think will be bigger than me, my mum she'd notice a change in my quirk that I don't think I could brush off, she'd know I was lying. Izuku looked up at the hero and bit his lip, I'm guessing this isn't something I can tell her about though. It was All Might's turn to shift awkwardly, it's not something I would like more people to know. Izuka nodded his understanding, but perhaps you could omit a few things, tweak the story so to say, to fit this sudden appearance of new abilities. Izuku thought about it for a few moments. I think I know what to say. He nodded, more to himself as if he was finally convinced on what to do. Yes then. I accept your proposal. I'll be the next holder for one for all. All Might's smile radiated, just as I expected. His mother hummed as Izuku told the story of why he was home late. I see, she finally said after putting down the tea Izuku had made for her after dinner. So, you're saying after helping the heroes rescue Katsuki from a villain, an old talent scout that's trained heroes wants to train you. Izuku squirmed under her stare, she knows, she knows I'm lying. She can feel that I'm lying, yep, that's about it. He seemed really nice and honest, and you know that I want to become a hero and he can really help me achieve that, you know, so I can get into you. Uh, his mother sighed, Izuku, you can't just go trusting old men on the street that say they want to train you. What if it was someone that wanted to kidnap you for your quirk? Izuku's brow furrowed in confusion. No one knows my quirk. I barely used it there so. Where's that come from? But his mother brushed off the question. How can this man say that he's interested in training you? All he could have seen was a schoolchild running into a dangerous situation which caused the heroes to truly get involved. Izuku frowned at that explanation, but understood why his mother saw it that way, he did leave out why he visited Kimi's grandmother and the whole initial incident with the slime villain. I guess it does kinda look like a random kid running into a situation he wasn't prepared for and then a mysterious man saying, I can train you. His mother noticed how quiet he'd gone, and reached across the table for his hands. Izuku smiled at the gesture and placed his own in hers, how soft and warm her hands were, he looked up at her face. You know I only ever want the best for you and know how much I support you in your dream to be a hero, she looked above him now at a space above his head where he knew a picture of his father hung. Izuku could feel his mother's emotion and no doubt she could feel his. If this is what you want, his mother began now looking at him again, then I will support you in this. Izuku could feel her apprehension but also her love, so overwhelming and pure. On one condition, she said smiling, I want to meet this man. She sat up straight then, pulling her hands away from him and crossed her arms. 
Izuka nodded, now how to explain this to All Might. Izuka lay on his bed looking at his phone in bafflement, it seemed All Might was happy to meet his mother tomorrow and, not only that, insisted that for this meeting and going forward, when he was in what he told Izuku his now, normal form, to call him by his name, Yagi Tashinori. Izuku sat up and stared at the poster of All Might he had hung on the wall opposite his bed. Yagi Tashinori, he said aloud, letting the name roll off his tongue. He smiled, and then smiled even wider at the thought of this man, his hero, coming into his house. All Might had always been his favorite hero as soon as he knew of what a hero was. His mother and father had encouraged his dream as well, and now it finally seemed he was at the starting line. He settled back down onto the bed and turned to face the small frame on his bedside table, I'm getting there, dad. Izuku whispered at the photo of his father holding a toddler version of Izuku on his knee, his mother stood behind them smiling. Izuku fell asleep that night, phone held loosely in his hand, and a smile on his face. The next morning the text from All Might, no Yagi-san, Izuku reminded himself, let him know he'd be there for lunchtime. Perfect, his mother had smiled warmly at Izuku for informing her, let's make some lunch for our guest. While Izuku helped his mother make yakitori, he mentioned offhandedly, I don't think he eats much, you'll see why. His mother raised an eyebrow, maybe we should make some miso soup in case he I can't stomach this, his mother nodded her confirmation and began preparing the soup. The clock slowly moved to 1 p.m. After lunch had been prepared, Izuku had taken to sitting on the sofa trying to read one of his father's books, his leg bouncing with nervous energy. The doorbell ringing caused him to slam the book shut, Oh Izuku, please calm down, you're making me nervous, his mother strolled past him to open the door. Afternoon Yagi-san, please do come in. We have lunch prepared if you'd like to join us for something to eat. Izuku stood up as Tashinori walked around the corner into the front room where he had been sitting waiting and smiled shyly. The hero smiled at him as well as his mother came bustling behind, come, come let's sit and discuss this business over some food. His mother guided Tashinori over to the small dining table, three places already set up, his mother's place, always opposite Izuku and facing the kitchen and the photograph of his father. She had placed Tashinori opposite her for this, what Izuku could only assume was an interrogation, and Izuku found himself sitting at the end of the table. The seat at the head of the table, was markedly empty. His mother and himself helped themselves to the food while Tashinori simply chose to drink the miso soup Izuku had suggested they prepared. So, his mother began nonchalantly as she sipped the green tea she had made for herself, you've taken interest in training my son. Izuku watched as All Might's throat bobbed as he swallowed in apprehension. I, um, yes. That's the short answer. He showed remarkable bravery and talent at handling a villain. His mother immediately looked at Izuku, handling a villain, she repeated, her eyes narrowing at Izuku, now it was his turn to swallow in apprehension. That is to say, All Might carried on, perhaps realizing Izuku may not have told his mother all the details of yesterday, he was very calm in the face of danger and if he had not stepped forward, and shown that courage, then perhaps the other young man would not have been so lucky. His mother had turned back to face All Might now, her green eyes searching his gaunt face. And that was what inspired you to chose my son. His recklessness. Izuku shrank somewhat in his seat. I'm sorry Yagi-san, but I need a little more convincing. I don't know how much you know about our situation, nor do I know anything about yours, so you can understand why I am apprehensive about letting my son, my only son, train with a man I don't know. Izuku thought that All Might would be put off now. The protectiveness of his mother had always been something Izuku had admired, but at this moment it was intimidating. But All Might's eyes glowed brightly and he smiled instead. Of course. You have good senses Midoriya-san, I am as much a stranger to you as you are to me, but I would like to not be for your son's sake. So, what can I do to make you trust me? His mother sat up straighter, tucked a loose hair behind her ear and sipped on her tea in contemplation. She put her tea down, and instead offered both hands to All Might. He looked down at them and then up to his mother's face, if you wouldn't mind, I just want to be certain. Please can you put your hands on mine, she said calmly. All Might looked to Izuku only briefly, who shrugged in response, before the hero placed his hands into his mother's. 
Have you taught others, she said after a moment. Once before. He owns his own hero office now and from what I can tell is rather successful. Even Izuku could pick up on the sadness that was there. His watched his mother's face, which too, seemed to mirror the same expression All Might wore. Do you mean to cause Izuku any harm? No. Well that is to say I can't guarantee he won't come back with aching muscles and maybe bruising from training, but to purposely harm him. No. His mother settled back slightly and smiled. Hmm. And the ultimate goal of all of this training. To help this young man succeed and achieve his dream of becoming a hero. All Might answered proudly, Izuku could feel that proudness and it caused him to blush slightly. How much do you know about Izuku's quirk? The question seemed to cause Toshinori to halt. He looked to Izuku only for a moment and proceeded to answer. Honestly, he began, I can't say I know an awful lot. I respect that people keep quiet about their quirks, but if your son is going to be a hero then his quirk is going to have to be known, not just by me but many others as well. His mother withdrew her hands then. I understand that fact, she looked at Izuku then, and smiled sadly, I can't protect him from the world as much as I would love to. Izuku blushed again. If you don't mind me asking, Midoriya-san, Inko, she said, picking up her tea again, you can call me Inko. All Might nodded, if you don't mind me asking, Inko-san, what is the nature of your quirk? Is it the ability to detect lies? His mother laughed airily, oh nothing as fancy as that. No, she said putting her tea down, I can sense emotions, and when touching someone I can pull them into me. Very useful work for counseling sessions, police interviews and court proceedings. So, when you touched me, I simply wanted to feel your true emotions, it's easier when touching someone. People can be very good at hiding their emotions but I can feel the residual effects, and when I have skin-to-skin -skin contact, I know exactly what you're feeling and can pull those emotions into me, if I so wish. If you were to suddenly do something rash, I would have taken all those emotions away. Inko smiled, her teeth showing sliding. It would have left you feeling very dull and empty. All Might nodded, swallowing slightly. Ah, you boy mentioned about feeling, emotions, and pain before. Their eyes both landed on Izuku who had been following this verbal chess match with great interest until the conversation finally landed on him directly. His mother spoke for him, Izuku has my quirk, in a way, she looked to him to carry on. Oh. Erm, um, yes. Like this, this being me and how I look right now, he said gesturing to himself, I can, you know feel the emotions of people, like how mum can. I can't do anything more than that with emotions in this state not to mention you're rather clever as well, his mother added in smiling. Ha, huh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I guess. He mumbled embarrassed. He looked to his mother who, after a moment's hesitation and a look to All Might, nodded, indicating he could continue. That's just a sort of, he looked at All Might, my normal state. Izuku breathed deep before carrying on. When I activate my quirk, depending on what side, he shifts slightly, my physical appearance also changes. All Might nodded, when I first saw you, your hair was black and so were your eyes. Although Izuku knew All Might was talking about their first encounter in the tunnel, his mother had to assume All Might was speaking about the rescue of Kaken. And the opposite must be when your hair is all green and so are your eyes. His mother turned to look at him, her eyes narrowing. And there are black vein-like markings that appear when, all Might never had the chance to finish the sentence as his mother almost hissed out his name incredulously. Izuku. He shrank in his seat slightly, what did I tell you about using that? Izuku I told you not to use that part of your quirk in public. She said anxiously, looking at him with pleading eyes. Izuku guessed that All Might had noticed he'd put the nail in the coffin for him and tried to turn the situation around. That is on me. His mother immediately rounded on him, her eyes narrowed. I, he looked to Izuku then sighed. It seems if we are sharing and keeping secrets then I shall reveal my own. Izuku opened his mouth to stop him, but All Might powered on, five years ago I was in a fight with a villain and suffered a grievous wound. I still suffer from it today, and your son noticed that. 
He helped me, for the first time in years, feel a little less in pain. Please, don't scold him for helping someone in pain. All Might's speech had softened his mother's features, and she closed her eyes sighing. Opening them again, she looked at both of them, before her eyes settled on Izuku, Izuku's father had the ability to absorb pain, something Izuku inherited as well. She smiled softly, sadly. Yagi-san, I can see you mean well and, strangely enough, I do trust you and your motive for training my son. She turned and looked at All Might now, I give you permission to train my son, but if I see anything I don't like, hear anything I don't like, you will not feel one ounce of anything, any emotion ever again. His mother sat up straighter, and to Izuku she looked as fierce as a mother bear, do you understand? Yes, M.M. Your mother is quite ferocious isn't she? All Might rubbed the back of his head, Izuku smiled and shook his head, the mop of green and black hair becoming messier in the movement. She's not normally. I think it's because you were a stranger to her. You're not anymore of course, now that you've met. Izuku flexed his hands then grabbed the ropes and began pulling again. All Might, in his muscle form was perched on top of a fridge as Izuku attempted to pull it towards a storage truck. If I could change into my hide form, this would make it go a lot quicker. He heaved again, but the fridge wasn't budging. Toshinori hummed, I'm glad you haven't been able to budge it, I'm getting comfy up here and it gives me time to think. Izuku sighed and pulled against the ropes again with everything he could. So you have more strength, in what you call your hide side. Straining against the rope, Izuku, in answer to the question, activated his quirk. He felt his emotions disappear and a newfound strength flood through him. He was more aware of the fibers of the rope in his hands, the sound of the waves splashing at the shore, the smell of rusting metal and the sea. And he pulled, the fridge budged for the first time, and it inched ever so slowly along the sand. Well, I say, that is a difference. All Might jumped off the fridge and landed in front of Izuku. What else comes with this side of the quirk? Izuku dropped the ropes and dusted his hands, increased strength, he began counting on his fingers, increased speed, heightened senses, and higher intellect. But, he held a finger up in front of All Might and waggled it, I have no emotions in this state, and I can't absorb pain. I can, however, relocate any pain I've stored in my body using the other side of my quirk, and pass it to anyone or anything as long as I have some sort of contact. To prove it, using the finger he's been pointed at All Might with, he poked the hero in the chest who comically yelped. Well, that would wake anyone up. All Might said moving backward slightly, rubbing his chest. Or kill them, Izuku shrugged, enough pain sent to someone's system can cause circulatory shock. Not that would ever do that, but it's something I needed to be aware of. Pain tolerance differs from person to person, so it's something I need to figure out before using this side of the quirk. Izuku could see All Might was listening raptly. Using you as an example, I would most likely have to keep in contact with you and send pain through your system continuously to wear you down. Someone like the slime villain, they only needed a concentrated shock and they were out. So that's why you were so calm when we first met. All Might said solemnly. You used this side on the slime villain. I didn't see that happen in the street fight. Ah, it was in the tunnel before you arrived. And, I didn't use it in the second round of me versing the slime villain as Bakugu was enveloped in the slime. I couldn't be sure the pain wouldn't transfer to him. I see. You thought of all of that in the split moment you saw your friend in danger. Very impressive. Izuku hummed, friend, he let his quirk drop and sighed. All Might looked at him worriedly, I'm fine. Just a little mentally taxing is all, going from no emotions to suddenly feeling them and others again, takes a moment. All Might nodded his understanding. Then, the other side of your quirk. Izuku rubbed the back of his head with a hand. It's not something mum likes me to talk about much, he looked at his. Hands which were blistering from the rope, he felt the aches of his muscles and, in the back of his mind, he was aware of the pain emitting from All Might. Taking a breath, Izuku activated his quirk again, only this time the other side. This side, is the polar opposite to the other. Where I was apathy, I'm now overflowing with empathy. 
Izuku held out his palms to All Might so he could see. Pain in my own body is like a circular system, I can absorb it now, and discharge it later. The more I absorb, the longer it'll take to feel the pain again. Black veins appeared over the palm of his hands, dark and poisonous like before fading away, taking with them the aches of the blisters. So those black lines, that's pain condensed. All Might asked curiously. Izuku nodded and touched All Might's arm and drew the pain from the hero's body into his own. All Might watched as the veins only appeared on Izuku's skin, dark and foreboding. That's enough, my boy. Izuku drew his hand away. I can feel your pain, it feels wrong to ignore it I don't mind absorbing it, but there's a limit to how much I can store before I need to SWCH to my other side to release it. Is there any more to this side of your quirk? Oh, yes. I can manipulate emotions if I'm in contact with you. Unlike my mum I don't absorb those, but I can change what you feel. From anger to calm, but again I need to be in contact with you, the same with absorbing pain and releasing it. All Might put a hand to his chin in contemplation. So, on one side you can absorb pain and manipulate emotions. On the other, you're stronger and can emit pain interesting. You're a two-in-one kinda guy. So you seem to have the strength of your normal side on the green-haired and eyed version, black hair and eyes is instead stronger. Not to mention, you're essentially a close-range fighter at this point in all forms. Hmm, Izuku turned his quirk off and rested against the fridge, that's pretty much it, more or less, well, back to it then. All Might said, clapping his hands together, before jumping back onto his perch on the fridge. Izuku pushed himself off from the fridge to stare at the hero. Why are we at the seaside park hauling garbage anyway? He said, shielding the rays of the rising sun with a hand. Because you're not quite ready to be a vessel. At Izuku's confusion, the hero hurried on, that is to say, your body isn't. Think of all for one as the sum convergence of the peak strength of countless men. A body that's too weak wouldn't be able to withstand such raw power. But my body, Izuku looked down at his hands and clenched them, I've already built my body up. As soon as he had voiced that he wanted to be a hero, his parents had signed him up to all types of classes. Many, Izuku ended up dropping as he grew up, but he continued with MMA and usual gym goings. While that is true, we need to push you further. Just now you to one side of your quirk to move this here fridge. What we need to do is have you move that fridge, without relying on the extra strength that side of your quirk gives you. It just means that, once your body has the strength to handle this, when you do active hide, you'll have even more strength. All Might gave him thumbs up then tapped the fridge, encouraging Izuku to carry on. There's only 10 months until the entrance exam, so I need to become strong enough to become a vessel. Izuku said picking up the ropes again. Don't worry, my boy, All Might said pulling out some folded papers from a trouser pocket. This is the plan I've drafted. It's called the Aim to Pass. American Dream Plan. Izuku nodded in confirmation and began pulling the fridge again. It became a routine that Izuku followed, school, beach cleanup, volunteering, personal training. He didn't mind it too much, but what was bothering him was how Kakan no longer seemed to harass him. It was something Izuku wanted and didn't want to stop, they used to be friends and the interactions they had, though not exactly friendly, somehow made Izuku feel like there was some possibility of friendship being there still. It wasn't just Kakan that had started to ignore him, his class had praised Kakan's bravery and a few even joked about the situation. But for Izuku, it was like he was the cause of the incident. A rumor had got around school that Izuku was originally in the slime villain's grasp then Kakan offered to change places like the hero he was. The rumor made Izuku feel sick to hear at first, the thought that someone originally saw him being swallowed up by the villain, that feeling of suffocation, clawing and crying as he dropped it was something he didn't want to think of again, but he realized that's not what people meant. Kakan was the hero in this version and the rumor was fueled by the fact that neither Izuku or Kakan confirmed or denied. He tried to piece together why Kakan was now actively avoiding him, again he thought. There was a time when they were younger when Kakan ignored Izuku for months before the bullying started and it seems they were in this limbo again. Midoriya, did that villain mess up your head? 
Please, pay attention and stop mumbling, you're distracting your fellow students. He ducked his head, but was distinctly aware of the whisperings of his classmates. Kids downright neurotic now, huh? Always talking about training and yui. Yeah, totally gives me the creeps. Izuku waited for Bakugu to pipe up with a comment but nothing followed. When did I become so ingrained of hearing these comments and waiting for the worst to come from Kaken? He shook his head to clear it and focused again on the schoolwork. At lunch though, he found himself no longer dining alone since the villain incident. I still think it's mad that you ran right up to that villain. Kimmy was sat opposite him at the lunch table and was pointing a fork at him. God, if I'd known you'd get up that kind of mischief I wouldn't have gone to Nina's after school. She pouted, before turning her fork back toward her lunch. I wasn't exactly planning on finding a villain to fight after visiting your grandmother. He pointed out to her before turning back to his notebook. He scribbled down the new weight he should start lifting but stopped when Kimmy kicked him under the table. You're getting to have a fair bit of muscle, what are you up to? Working out to impress a girl. She winked at him, before biting into more food, her hair and eyes changing to a pale green. Izuku blushed then closed the notebook. No, I'm... No, that's not, Kimi laughed at how flustered he'd become, he could feel her amusement. He scowled at her, no. I'm training for Yui. If I want to pass the test, I need to be stronger. She looked him, her hair changing back to white, and her head to the side. But you're already strong, Izuku, the strongest person I know. She smiled at him, and Izuku could feel the adoration coming from her. He blushed again, while she carried on. And, Bakugu seems to have finally realized that as well, he barely interacts with you now. He frowned, I don't know if that's a good thing though, better than being harassed in class. She pointed out. Unless you like that kind of attention, you know, sorta like a MSCST. She burst out laughing again as Izuku burned red with embarrassment. She touched a strawberry from Izuku's fruit pot and joined him by changing her hair red and smiling. Tashinori had become a feature of the Midoriya household over the months he had been training Izuku. Although he had not revealed who he really was to Inko she seemed to suspect something about him, but didn't voice it, which he was grateful for. Tashinori-san, just in time for dinner. Inko invited him into the house. Izuku will be home soon. He's just picking up a few things for me at the shop. She smiled as she ushered him into his usual chair. He smiled as he thought that, my chair, though he glanced at the permanently empty chair of Hisashi Midoriya. It was the one thing neither of the remaining Midoriyas really spoke of, how or why the patriarch of the family was missing. As much as Toshinori was curious about it, it wasn't something he would push either of them to speak of. He was brought out of his musing as he heard a familiar voice come through the door. Mom, I'm home. I got the carrots and onions you asked for. Oh, hi Yagi-san. The youngest Midoriya came into view and smiled at him before dropping the shopping off into the kitchen. He came back moments later carrying tea for them both and sitting at the chair opposite Toshinori. How are you feeling, my boy? Toshinori could see Izuku was nervous by the way he sat the way he ran a hand through his hair or clench and unclench his fists. How odd it is to know all these mannerisms of his Toshinori thought. It's normal to be nervous, the test is tomorrow. I don't know if I'm ready for it. The boy answered quietly. Toshinori sipped his tea before answering, you never know if you're ready for something unless you take that leap. He put his tea down and stared at Izuku. You've worked towards this all these months and tomorrow I will be there to support you no matter the outcome. And your mother, he paused as he heard the comforting sounds of kitchen, the knife on a chopping board, water bubbling in a pan, Inko's quiet humming of a song. Your mother will always support you. So, my boy, you have nothing to fear of tomorrow. He gave a dashing smile and thumbs up which caused the boy to smile shakily in return. He nodded his head in confirmation, when do we? The whole vessel business, Toshinori looked at the boy. He had grown so much in ten months, mentally and physically, all in all the boy was more than ready to possess one for all but Toshinori hesitated. He would be saying goodbye to an old friend, 
that flame he had been holding all these years, close to his chest. Nana's last gift. But he knew this power was no longer his to possess, and he wasn't really saying goodbye merely acknowledging now was the time to part ways. He sat up straighter, looked the boy in the eyes and asked, would you prefer to consume my BLD or a strand of my hair? Ha! Huh. Hair was what Izuku chose in the end, followed swiftly with a gulp of tea. He pulled a face that All Might laughed at which caused his mother to pop her head around to see what they were both up to before she returned to the kitchen. Why did I eat your hair? Izuku asked quietly, taking another sip of his tea. All Might smiled at him then whispered conspiratorially. That is how one passes on one for all. Willingly giving away the power in a form of your DNA. He sat back in his chair and Izuku thought he seemed lost in thought before he said, You never did say, what's the name of your quirk? Instead of answering All Might directly, Izuku went into the front room where the bookcases were, full of a range of books from medical to old literature. His fingers stroked the spines of the books, broken from constant handling, slightly pale from exposure the sun. He found the one he was looking for and went back to a sitting All Might who was watching him curiously. Izuku gently placed the book down on the table, his hand rested on the cover. It was one of my dad's favorite books. I named my quirk after it, he moved his hand away and pushed the book towards All Might so he could see the title. The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. All Might said. He looked at Izuku oddly before he turned the book over and read the blurb. Hmm. It sort of sounds like your quirk, Izuku shifted awkwardly, rubbing the back of his head with a hand. Ha, huh, I mean, yeah. A happy coincidence I think. A man who splits himself into good and evil essentially. Izuku took the book from All Might's hands and opened it, turning the pages carefully. It's an interesting read, considering how old the story is. There are some people online who think it's the first case of a quirk. It isn't of course, but I like the idea that perhaps there were individuals with quirks living back then. He gently ran his fingers along the pages before looking up at All Might, I think he liked this book because a doctor was involved, he smiled then looked back down at the page. But, also because he realized that we live in a world of Jekyll and Hyde's. Heroes and villains. I think that we teach everyone that you have to be one or the other, but, Izuku hesitated, then closing the book and placing it back on the table, he looked back into All Might's blue, blue eyes, we're a mixture of all those things, good and bad. It's up to us to choose how to act like how I get to choose which side of my quirk to use. All Might smiled at him deeply and Izuku felt himself sit up straighter as the hero stood up and raised a hand, only for it to fall onto Izuku's head and ruffle his hair. You sure come out with some inspirational things, kid. I need you to teach me some of that. Ah, Izuku said blushing as All Might returned to his seat, life is a good teacher. At that point his mother came in carrying bowls of katsudon. Oh, one of your father's books. Inko said placing the food down in front of them both, Izuku's and his father's favorite, that book is your good luck charm isn't it? Mom. Izuku embarrassed. It's more like a book security blanket. He mumbled. All Might laughed loudly. My, I shall have to find a copy for myself. The hero said, smiling widely before sitting back down and taking a small bite of the meal his mother had made, this is wonderful as always, Inko-san. Izuku watched as his mother blushed at the compliment. Nothing but the best for my boys. She laughed embarrassedly, waving off the compliment. Izuku looked back and forth between them both, his eyes narrowing in suspicion. The evening had passed too quickly for Izuku's liking, he realized as he stood before the gates of Yui the next morning that both he and All Might had somehow neglected asking or telling how one for all worked. It's fine. It'll be fine. I'll just figure it out. It'll be fine. I'll be fi. F off, Deku. Bakuga's voice cut through the babble of the other attendees and the nervousness Izuku could feel. Instead, he felt Bakuga's anger, bubbling and seething like pot left on an open flame. And Izuku, after ten months of not hearing anything from Bakugu, turned and smiled at the boy. And a good morning to you too. Don't stand in my way today. Don't think of showing off or doing anything to undermine me. 
Bakugu spat to Izuku as he walked past. Oh look isn't that Bakugu. The guy who was involved in the slime incident. Yeah, you're right. And isn't that the other student who helped him? Izuku ducked his head. Their names had got into the press back when the incident first occurred but people were happy to ignore Izuku's involvement, a weird-looking kid running into trouble, for Kaken's more exciting story, school kid held hostage. Izuku suspected the latter was what was causing Kaken to keep his head down the past ten months. Izuku shook his head to clear it, things are changing. They have been for past ten months and this is the first step forward. He watched as Bakugu stalked into the school and Izuku went to follow, deciding to keep his head down and that's precisely when he tripped over and saw the ground rise up, except he never hit it. Sorry for using my quirk on you. I just thought it might have been a bad omen if you tripped and hurt yourself on the way to the exam. Izuku watched in bafflement and the girl righted him before touching her fingers together. Immediately he felt his gravity return and he stared at the girl. I'm so nervous, I bet you are too. Izuku could feel the girl's nervousness and nodded his confirmation. Well, she said, moving away towards the entrance, good luck. See you later. And as soon as she had come into Izuku's world she had gone. See you later, Izuku said quietly, hand half raised in goodbye to the girl's back. Welcome one and all to my live show. Everybody say he. Present Mick's voice heard Izuku's eardrums from all the way up in the rows of seat where he was sat. The hero didn't seem to notice or care that his audience didn't respond with much enthusiasm, but carried on with the same energy anyway. I've got shivers down my spine, too, listeners. All right examinees. I'm gonna give you the lowdown on how this'll go down. Are you ready? That caused the auditorium to stir with excitement. Oh my god. It's the voice type hero, present Mike. Izuku couldn't help but say out loud. I listen to him on the radio, like every week. This is incredible, the lecturers at Yui really are pro heroes. Please, shut it. Izuku snapped his mouth shut at Bakugwo's words. It just so happened they had both ended up sitting next to each other but Izuku couldn't help being slightly happy about the situation. It was nice to be in a strange new place with at least one familiar face, even if that face was currently scowling at everyone. Now pay close attention, listeners. We'll be testing your mettle by running a 10-minute practice run at our Replica City District. You can take whatever you like to help you. Everybody gather at the designated meeting area after the presentation, cool. They don't intend on letting people who know each other cooperate in this exercise, huh? Bakugu whispered out loud. Izuku turned to look at the spiky-haired blonde but he was staring ahead at present Mike they gave us serial numbers for the exam this morning, but it seems the actual meeting areas are elsewhere, Izuku wasn't sure if he was relieved that he wouldn't be in the same arena as Kaken. It's probably for the best, Bakugu sat forward in his chair, leaning slightly on the balcony, it'd be embarrassing that I ruined your only chance by crushing you. Izuku could feel Bakuga's excitement and underneath, that ever-present anger. A presentation began on the screen behind present Mike, we'll be sprinkling a large number of villains over the battlefield. You'll fit in, Izuku heard Bakugu say but he ignored the comment. They'll appear in three different varieties, with point values scaled according to difficulty. Using each of your individual quirks, we ask that you attempt to dispatch as many of these villains. Your goal, listener, is to rack up a high score. Izuku was aware of the general feelings of everyone, excitement. But, present Mike carried on, don't think we'll allow any direct attacks on your other competitors. That's against the rules, capiche? Excuse me, may I ask a question? Izuku sat up straighter to see who had spoken up. A nerd if I saw one, Kaken said quietly. Izuku didn't mean to smile at that but his lips crept upward slightly. The student carried on without waiting for a response from present Mike, on the handout, there are clearly four types of villains listed. Such an error would be embarrassing for a top-tier national academy like Yui to make. The reason we are all seated here today is because we seek your guidance on the path to becoming model heroes. He then turned to face Izuku and Bakugu before pointing a finger directly at Izuku. Moreover, what's with you? 
Yeah, you with the green curly hair, can't you keep quiet for a second, you're rather distracting. While Bakugo was smirking next to him, Izuka ducked his head slightly, sorry, he mumbled out the apology. Okay, okay. Present Mike spoke up, stopping the snickering that had broken out. Thanks for the segue, much appreciated examinee 7111. The fourth type of villain you might encounter is worth a grand total of zero points. We'll call those ones the Farina Traps. They'll go into a rampage when crowded. The hero winked to the crowd who had broken out into murmurs. Then that's where most of the robots will be, Izuku said quietly. Bakugu grunted in confirmation. Thank you very much. The kid with glasses who had called Izuku out replied to present Mike I apologize for being rude. The hero laughed, which caused some of the students to cover their ears. Well, that's enough from me. I'll leave you all with a presentation on the school precepts of this academy of mine. He paused briefly, as a certain hero, by the name of Napoleon Bonaparte once said, a true hero never stops overcoming the misfortunes in life. The hero held his hands out wide, now let's move to the main event. Plus Ultra. The students began to fidget with, what Izuku could feel as a mixture of excitement, nervousness and anticipation. He could barely focus on the presentation of the school being in such a crowd and before he knew it the lights came on and the students started moving towards the exits. Are you gonna move or what? Izuku looked up to see Kaken was looming over him. Yeah, Izuku shook himself out of his stupor. Yeah, sorry. He stood up and moved with the crowd toward the exit, looking down at his paper to see what area he needed to head to, Bakugu strolled past him, good luck. Izuku called but the boy didn't react. It's so big. Izuku stared in awe, as he took in the view of what appeared to be a whole city. This might as well be a whole town. I wonder how many replica sites like this exist on the campus. Another student near him spoke up. Izuku looked around and although it looked as though no one was nervous, he could feel it, rising like waves and almost making him nauseous. He closed his eyes and breathed in and out slowly, trying not to focus on everyone's emotions. He opened his eyes however when he became drawn to someone's feelings. Nerves, of course, but a sense of determination that made Izuku feel warm inside. He cast his eyes around until he found who it was, it's that girl, she's been assigned to this arena, too. He looked around and decided being near someone he knew, even barely, seemed better. He strolled over, readying himself to thank her when a voice called out to him. I see what you're up to. You're planning to measure that girl's power of concentration. Izuku felt himself being spun round and was suddenly staring into the face of the student with glasses who had called him out earlier. You didn't come to obstruct your fellow test takers, did you? Izuku was distinctly aware of others in the area staring at him, Snickers had started up. Talking throughout out the presentation, now disrupting a student trying to focus. Who exactly are you, my friend? Izuku felt affronted, his quirk stirred inside of him itching to activate at this insult. Well, I might as well show him exactly who I am. Izuku activated his quirk, letting Hyde take over. The boy let go of his shoulder and stepped back slightly. No, he said smiling, baring his teeth. I didn't come here to obstruct you, I came to beat you. Mind you don't touch me again, you might get stung. He turned back around then, staring at students in turn who had been watching them. His ears pricked up as he heard the low frequency of a speaker humming. It's going to start. He walked away from the boy and instead moved into the crowd, weaving around the other examinees until he was closer to the front, preparing himself for what he knew was coming. A.N. Start. Present Mick's voice carried easily over the crowd and Izuku didn't hesitate, the only one that rushed forward into the mock city. He could still hear Present Mike talking easily. What's the matter? There's no countdown when it comes to a real battle. Consider the starting gun fired. He found the first robot, well more likely the robot found him. One pointer, fast but brittle he recalled from the presentation. I'm faster he spoke aloud and dodged around the robot. He pounced onto its back and ripped the metal protecting the wires in its neck and pulled at several, which caused it to stop moving. He his head to the side in interest, 
where he'd ripped open the robot, he noticed the glow of a screen. Ripping more of the robot's outer metal off, he came to find a small screen that was still working. It must be using this to discern and track students and other robots. He didn't want to be spotted by the other students now entering the arena, so he ripped the robot's head and carried it into an empty warehouse from where it looked like the robot had originally emerged from. He heard the footfalls of students run past him, complaining of the first robot being taken. Calm down, Izuku thought rolling his eyes, it's only a one-pointer. After fiddling with a few wires, and discarding the rest of the protective outer casing, Izuku left the warehouse with the small screen showing the dots of students and robots alike. With ease he dodged the areas where it was populated with students and headed to the areas where it seemed the robots were stationary waiting for students to come into their activation field. He headed backwards and to the left of where he'd originally entered the arena and came across the robots the screen had shown. He bowed and held out a hand towards the three one-pointers, shall we dance? The robots moved quickly, the three of them surrounded Izuku before he'd straightened himself. You'll have to take turns being my partners. Who's first, he spoke calmly, tucking the screen into the pocket of his tracksuit jacket and standing up straight, moving into a fighting stance. The first robot lunged from his left and Izuku swiveled on his foot, dancing out the way with ease, like a matador and bull. The robot halted just before it hit the other stationary one. Interesting. It didn't know the other one was there until I moved and one robot is only active at a time for one student. He supposed it made sense, no point in mobbing a student if they're incapable of taking down a robot, let alone three. But Izuku was ready to use this situation to his advantage the robot charged again, raising one of its arms and leveling the gun that was attached to its underarm at Izuku. Target lock on. Murder. Oh my, murder. You're getting me all excited now. He smiled, adjusting where he was standing so his back was to one of the stationary robots. He then ran towards the barrel of the gun. He could hear the clang of metal, the whirring of gears, even smelt the oil of the robot. At the last moment, when he heard the click of, what he assumed was most likely a RBB bullet slotting into place, he slid under the gun and arm of the robot just as the bullet was released. As the same time, he extended his arm up as he slid under the robot's own. He forced pain into his hands and through his fingertips as he stroked the metal while sliding underneath. The robot's arm groaned as the metal began to condense inwards. When Izuku had completed his slide, he could see the aftermath. The robot he'd been standing in front of before he'd run down the other was now a smoking heap, huh, not RBB bullets then. The one who had shot the bullet craned its neck to lock onto Izuku again, but when it tried to raise its gun arm again it couldn't. Damaged more than the paint there. He jumped backwards to avoid the robot's other working arm. You lot are fast, aren't you? He jumped backwards again as the robot took another swing, this time taking a chunk of building with it. Izuku shook his head, running a hand through his hair to dislodge the grit and small debris that had rained down on him and the surrounding area. His clothes were covered in the orange dust of brickwork. Target lock on. Murder. The robot repeated itself and turned to face Izuku a final time. Its arm extended out, but Izuku ducked watching as the hand instead tore straight through the last stationary robot. The robot hit the ground noisily, the clawed hand of the still working robot now trapped in the metal casing of its partner as it pulled its arm backwards, dragging the metal body of the other robot with it, Izuku strolled up to the working robot in question, wrapped both hands around its neck and pulled. The head tore away from metal and wires and Izuku dropped it onto the ground, the body followed soon after. He'd never been more grateful for All Might's training, forcing him to build up his body more meant that this form was capable of tearing items from robots off with relative ease. But he was aware of his hands taking a lot of damage from essentially tearing up metal. I'll need to change into Jekyll soon he thought looking at the state of his hands, cuts marred them, with a mix of BLD oil and grit coating his palms. He wiped them on the trouser legs of his tracksuit, wincing slightly at the stinging sensation, before taking out the screen he'd tucked away in order to fight properly, and carried on into other parts of the arena. Three points or one point, it didn't matter to him, only that he wanted to pass. He tucked the screen into his tracksuit jacket pocket to free up his hands, as he moved around the three-pointer robot with the ease of a dancer. 
he decided to test something he'd been working on with All Might and so built up the stored up pain he'd been absorbing from All Might the past week into his hand. He held it there, thick black veins swirling and throbbing with condensed pain. Holding it in his hand caused his muscles and bones to ache in the same way lactic acid burned his muscles from the intense exercises of the beach. He waited until the robot's head turned to face him before putting his palm against it and forcing the pain outwards, and into the metal. He jumped back wiping his sweating forehead with the sleeve of his tracksuit. The robot's head had collapsed inwards, but it had taken almost all of Azuka's power to cause it to do so. It's not something I would have been capable of before I'd met All Might, the most I could crush with this power that was non-living was a can, and now I can crush a robot with a touch. He closed his eyes and let a wave of nausea pass over him. It was common when he sent too much pain outwards at once, his muscles felt shaky but he needed to continue. The one-pointers don't require much pain to take them down, slightly more than if I was trying to stun a person, but those three-pointers require far more. Six minutes, two seconds left. Present. Mike announced. Izuku took out the small screen, studying it before he stopped walking. Something had been bothering him and it was a little blue dot indicating a student. They hadn't moved almost the entire time he'd been looking at the screen. They're so close to the entrance, why haven't they moved further in? He worked out how many points he'd got so far, 20 give or take, not enough to get in but tapping his foot before sighing heavily, Izuka decided to drop his quirk and head towards the student. As he jogged closer he understood why they weren't moving. The first emotion Izuka felt was bitterness, then anger and frustration, pain, and a deep, deep sadness. The student was on the ground, they were bent forward awkwardly to hold their ankle, Izuku understood at once. Hi, he said gently but it still caused the student to startle. Izuku took a good look at him, his purple hair seemed to almost defy gravity and the bags under his eyes were almost on the verge of looking like bruises. What do you want? You can't attack other examinees you know. The student said. Izuka crouched down and his head to the side to evaluate what the injury was. I'm not going to attack you, he held the screen out to the student to hold who looked at it curiously before grabbing it. Your ankle, I think it's twisted. I can help take away some of the pain, so you'll be able to move on it again, but by no means will it be healed. He turned to face the student who was looking at him through narrowed eyes. Izuku held his hands up in defense, only an offer but you might be able to carry on at least. The student looked away and nodded the go-ahead. Izuku gave him a shaky smile before activating his quirk, this time Jekyll. He pulled up the leg of the boy's tracksuit, rubbed his own damaged hands on his tracksuit to clear them, before placing his hands on the ankle and focusing on the pain. As he absorbed the boy's pain he tweaked his emotions enough to calm him down, he'll be able to focus now he's calm, Izuku thought. When he could draw no more pain, he turned off his quirk again and stood up. He offered his hand out to the student, I'm sorry they're a bit dirty, comes with the whole destroying robots thing, he laughed awkwardly. The boy took one look at his hand before placing his own in it. Izuku hoisted him up with ease and watched as the student gently put weight on the foot again. Like I said, it's not healed. Walking on it might cause more damage but you shouldn't feel any of that for a while, at least until the end of the day. The boy looked at him and nodded. Not much of a talker, is he? Here, the boy said holding out the screen showing the location of robots and students alike, it's yours. Izuka shook his head, technically it's the robots that I ripped it out of, you keep it. The blue dots are students, the red dots are robots. Izuka pointed to each dot in turn. He noticed that a large amount of blue and red dots were now congregated in one area, the zero pointer will activate if it's crowded, I have to go see if anyone else is in your situation and needs a helping hand. Izuku began to run towards where the screen had shown the large gathering. He stopped suddenly and turned around, it was nice meeting you. I hope to see you around. He waved before carrying on towards trouble. You never told them how many villains or where they'd been placed, Toshinori was watching the screen with hungry eyes, very sneaky of you. A strict time limit and a vast battleground are the perfect couple when it comes to uncovering the potential of these kids. Toshinori couldn't see who had said that comment, the room was dark in order to better see the vast network of screens. 
Insight, the ability to grasp the situation quickly and accurately. Agility, the ability to move quickly and easily from one thing to another. Judgment, the ability to face any obstacle with composure. And of course, sheer fighting prowess. Snipe stepped forward to watch the screen Toshinori has been staring at. And that kid seems to have it all, Aizawa fell in line next to Toshinori's other side, using the light of the screen to read the paper on the clipboard in front of him. Midoriya Izuku. Quirk, Jekyll and Hyde. The ability to absorb and redistribute pain, along with slight empathic skills and heightened senses, strength and speed depending on what side of the quirk is activated. Toshinori heard Aizawa hum in thought. He scrapped destroying robots and is now aiding the other examinees. Toshinori's heart was soaring with pride. He couldn't possibly have known about the secret scoring part, he's just helping others because that's what he feels is right. He's getting people to move back toward the start, seems he clocked onto what's coming. Snipe said, crossing his arms as he turned to watch the other screens. Toshinori's eyes flicked to them as well, watching his boy talk to the other students, gently helping them up or rubbing their back and guiding them away. At one point, Midoriya happened to stare right into the camera, his green eyes with no pupils were always something that shook Toshinori whenever he saw them, compared to what they truly look like, but right now he could see the creases of a smile around the corners. The green hair was slightly damp with sweat, with a coating of dust and grime, but what caught Toshinori was the smile the boy wore. He watched as Midoriya wiped his brow with his forearm and then turned away, back into the battlefield. What a cute look. Sorta smiled like you do all might. Toshinori recognized Midnight's voice and started as the thought someone might catch on that he knew the boy. Huh, do you think? He must be a fan. He laughed loudly to deflect his nervousness but wasn't oblivious to the look Aizawa was giving him. Well, before he evacuates the whole arena, shall we test the metal of the ones we have left? Toshinori couldn't be sure of who said it, but understood what they meant and moments later the screen was filled with a beast of a robot emerging from a building. Come on my boy win this. It brought down a building. Its hand crushing it downwards like it was nothing more than a sandcastle. Rubble and debris started raining and people began to flee. They barged past Izuku, knocking into him in their rush to escape the oncoming behemoth. Izuku even recognized the kid with glasses, zooming past him away to safety. Except, he couldn't leave. He could feel it, somewhere, someone was in pain and they were scared and Izuku could do something about it. Would do something about it. The dust was settling with sunlight filtering through casting deep shadows, and it was in the shadow of the looming robot that Izuku spotted her, the girl who had stopped him from falling over earlier that morning. Izuku could see that her ankle was trapped and she didn't seem like she could use her quirk anymore. She can't move and even if I get over to her in hide form, I might not get us both out of there in time, what do I do? Izuku was aware the more he hesitated the closer the robot came to crushing her. All might what do I do? And it was then that Izuku recalled he possessed the hero's power. I don't know how to use it. His stomach was churning from the anxiety and he brought up his hands up to his face to see the damage, they were shaking. He clenched them into fists, relishing in the pain that flooded through them and he felt himself moving forward before he even knew it. What am I doing? I don't know how to work this quirk. But it didn't. Seem to matter as Izuku powered forward. He was dimly aware of the green lightning sparking off of him. He felt his skin and his very bones burning with a power that was almost intoxicating. He likened it to a fever mixed with adrenaline that fueled his movements. He ran past the girl, and without really knowing what he was doing and without putting much thought into his actions, jumped pulling his fist back in the moment. He'd never thought he'd be able to jump this high before and nor did he think he'd be able to wield so much power and yet he was doing both. He threw his arm forward, it collided with the robot's face with the force of a bomb and Izuku felt pain rushing up his arm immediately. He felt as though time had slowed down as he watched in surprise as the metal of the robot's face compress in on itself, while the force also sent the robot flying backwards. Small explosions started up as the mechanics caught a flame, stray bits of metal flew off, raining downwards and Izuku felt himself following the same course. Oh, 
was all he could say realizing he had no plan on how to land and that his right arm and legs were heavily damaged. Seeing the ground come closer, Izuku let out a shaky sigh. Well, if I'm going to hit the ground, I might as well make it painless. He closed his eyes as he activated his quirk, letting Jekyll take over. The pain that had started to spike in his arm and legs vanished as he absorbed it and he kept that part of the quirk activated, waiting for the ground collect his body but instead he felt a hand slap his cheek. He opened his eyes as he bobbed in the air, turning his head, he saw the girl floating on a piece of robot. They gently floated lower and lower until they were a meter above the ground. Release. The girl's voice sounded strained. Izuku let out an oomph as he landed on the ground and watched as many other pieces of robot that were floating at the time were now crashing into the ground. He looked to the girl, noticing she was slumped forward on the piece of robot she'd been floating on, but as far as he could see she wasn't too badly injured, unlike him. Not feeling any pain was something Izuku rarely made use of on himself, a side of his quirk his mother didn't like him to use but today has been an exception and like All Might had said, something Izuku and his mother needed to accept as something that couldn't be hidden anymore. So, although Izuku had both legs broken and a right arm to match, with his quirk activated absorbing his own pain, he slowly made his way over to the girl. She was looking at him now with wide eyes but he raised his right hand in a hello gesture and gave her a smile, before his legs promptly gave out from under him. Yo, where did this dude come from? I never saw someone like him running around. He sent that robot flying. Its head is clean caved in. I don't think he should be moving. Are you alright? We need a medic here. The students had come back into the area to investigate the scene and weren't disappointed by what they saw. Izuku had managed to go from kneeling, where his legs could no longer support his weight, to moving them so they were spread out in front of him. He moved his right arm so it was cradled against his chest to avoid further damage to it. He was already convinced he'd given himself a boxer's fracture, his hand was swollen, with a heavy purple discoloration, spreading like spilled paint across his knuckles and down the side of his hand. His fingers had become misaligned and although he could feel no pain, it was strong to move them. He was surprised that the sleeve of his tracksuit had also been destroyed. If I get in, I'll have to incorporate something into a costume to prevent that, Izuku was drawn out of his musings by a new voice full of authority. He scanned the crowd and almost wanted to attempt to stand up again with excitement as he saw a recovery girl part the crowd, handing out sweets along the way. You inflicted this much damage on yourself with your own quirk, huh? She stood over him, her walking stick gently tapping his leg and frowned seeing Izuku's bright smile at her. I think you're in shock, to me it looks like your body and quirk aren't fully synced, hmm? Izuku tapped his feet together in contemplation, not out of sync so much, more like too much water boiling in the pan at that moment. He smiled at her again. She shook her head and stepped closer to Izuku before planting an embrace on his head. Immediately, Izuku was struggling to keep his eyes open, a sudden exhaustion sweeping over him but he watched, as the parts of his body that were injured seemed to glow. The purple bruise on his hand disappeared and his fingers seemed to find their proper place in their joints again. He pulled his legs closer to his chest, smiling at the fact he could bend the knees properly. He wobbled slightly as he stood up, becoming lightheaded and having to blink away the black spots in his eyes. Careful now, not so fast. My quirk amplifies and speeds up the healing process of whomever I activate it on, but it'll leave you exhausted. She dug around in the deep pockets of her doctor's coat before handing Izuku a couple of lollipops. Get the BLD sugar levels back up. She looked around to other student, are there any more injured to take care of? Izuku immediately spotted the girl who had saved him but the healer was already taking off in that direction, meanwhile the other students were now being led out of the arena. I hope I get the chance to thank her, Izuku decided to drop his quirk when he was deep in the crowd of the students heading out. I fully count how many points I'd collected. You'll hear back from Yui today about the results won't you, or is it tomorrow? His mother asked him as she walked past with some folded washing. Izuku dog-eared the page of the book he'd been reading, Kafka on the shore, and instead grabbed one of the weights that were left around the house. He needed to keep busy, to keep his mind off of what had occurred. He told his mother about using both sides of his quirk, 
and though she had initially seemed uneasy and looked concerned she understood it was something that needed to happen. Have you heard from Yagi-san? He asked. All Might had messaged him only once after the exam, saying he was proud no matter the result. No, not recently. He did mention that he'd be out of town for a while, visiting friends, sorting out business and such. His mother came back and sat next to him on the sofa. She placed her hand on his arm and Izuku slowly lowered the weight so it was once again resting on the floor. You know I'm proud of you no matter what. Look at what you've achieved so far Izuku, you saved that girl while others ran away. I think that's very heroic. Izuku leaned his head on his mother's shoulder and turned into her neck more, he could smell her perfume and the scent of the laundry detergent. I... I did what I thought was right, he mumbled, but I might have wasted Yagi-san's time if I don't get in. I felt like he had high hopes for me, his mother was stroking his hair and Izuku closed his eyes, feeling content with the calming movement. I was always under the impression that it's your choices that show who you truly are, not your abilities. And you showed them all that you're willing to risk yourself to save another. Izuka could feel his mother's emotions, like a swirling current of pride and anxiety, but her love for him was always there. It scared me when you told me what you did and it scares me that if you get into Yui that's what you'll be expected to do, but that's your choice Izuku and it always will be. If they can't see that, well I'll go to that school myself and give them a telling off. His mother stopped stroking his hair and tapped his leg, Izuku moved his head off her shoulder, sitting up to look at her as she moved off the sofa, and, we never had to pay Toshinori-san for training you so we can always blame him. She laughed at Izuku's expression as she wandered away to collect the morning post but came back moments later, Is. Izuku. I think this is for you. She handed him a small envelope. It felt heavy and something was sliding from side to side as he tipped the letter from one way to the other. He stood up then, his mother giving him a quick hug before letting him head to his room for privacy. He closed the door to his room and sat at his desk, for the longest time he stared at the envelope. It holds the answer to my dreams, he closed his eyes, took a deep breath and let it out, opening his eyes before ripping open the letter. There was a letter folded neatly inside, but what intrigued Izuku more was the small disc-like item that had clattered onto the desk. He went to pick it up before it made a slight whirring sound and a video started projecting itself in front of him, a familiar voice speaking somewhere off to the side. Testing, 1, 2 am I on screen? All might. Is this video from Yui? It took some time to have this all sorted so I apologize for not being able to contact you sooner. The small video All Might bowed, his pinstripe suit looked to be on the verge of ripping at the action. I guess we'll be seeing even more of each other, outside of your house and at a beach. It's been decided that I'll be working at Yui from now on. All Might will be at Yui. We'll be seeing a lot more of each other, Izuka's heart was at the implication of that sentence. You did superb on the written test, no doubt that you wouldn't there. And at the practical you had us all in a tizzy, no one could predict what you would do. Izuka bowed his head, biting his lip in anxiety and gripped the legs of his trousers. His actions had been reckless and he couldn't be for certain he'd really racked up enough points considering he stopped destroying the robots in favor of helping the other students. If you watch this screen you'll understand why. Izuku looked up then and watched as the All Might on his screen turn on another one, which came into focus. It was the purple-haired student Izuku had stopped for first. He helped me when he didn't need to, even gave me the upper hand, with this device. I thought it was only right that he deserved some of the points I got, even if they weren't many, then another student flashed onto the screen. He really helped me out of tricky spot. I wouldn't have been able to get a couple more of those fake villains if he hadn't taken away some of the pain I was feeling in my arms. I thought he at least deserved some acknowledgement. One after another, students that Izuku had helped came onto the screen. He felt his eyes water at their comments, they were all thanking him, praising him. I don't deserve this, then finally, the girl with the gravity quirk appeared. Would it be possible to share some of my points with him? He probably lost out on getting more points because I got myself into trouble. That boy. He saved my life, Izuku stood up, knocking his chair behind him. He gripped his desk to stop his legs from shaking. 
much more so than any quirk, are the actions of an individual that touches people the most. All Might had come back onto the screen now, his smile taking up most of his face. We judges were looking at more than the strength of a person's quirk, we were looking at the strength of their character, their resolve to do the right thing. Midoriya Izuku, 100 points. Izuku stood shaking, as All Might spoke the words he'd wanted to hear for so long, words he never thought he would hear. Come on down, Midoriya, my boy. Yui's now your hero academia. The video ended then, the room now silent apart from his sniffles. Izuku wiped his eyes with the palms of his healed hands. He looked at them, the hands that had helped him win points by destroying robots and helping others. A power to help and a power to harm, he clenched his hands into fists and stood up straight, he looked at the poster of All Might that still hung on his wall and smiled shakily at it, a laugh of relief already making its way of him, before he turned to face the picture of his dad on his bedside table. I'm there, dad, he thought. I'm going to be a hero. The results of the practical skills entrance examination are here, Nizu announced from the podium he stood behind. Shoyuda stared up at the screen, comparing the notes he had made watching the examinees to the board. He managed to rack up enough points by simply destroying the one and two point villain bots, approaching them slowly and continuously intercepting them with flashy explosions. Nizu explained happily. Shoyuda looked at the notes he'd make on Bakugu Katsuki. Powerful and versatile quirk. Intelligent but confrontational. Doesn't work well in a team. He had underlined that last part. Watching the boy interact with others in the arena showed that the kid didn't get along with others. And almost at the other end of the spectrum, the kid who ranked once with almost only rescue points. Nisa's smile widened. We've had entrance face off with the zero pointer in the past but it's been quite some time since someone sent it flying like that. Murmurs spread across the room but settled down once Nizu started speaking again. But, he held up a finger, the injuries he incurred from the blowback of that particular part of his quirk were intense. It was almost like a child manifesting their quirk for the first time. Someone whispered behind Shoyuda. He looked at the name on the screen then down at his notes on Midoriya Izuku. Intelligent, determined, but reckless willing to sacrifice an arm and a leg for others. Literally, Shoyuda thought and smiled to himself. Whatcha smiling about? Present Mike whispered conspiratorially. They both had the same tactic, Shoyuda wasn't about to let Hizashi know about his lame joke. Execution was different but that's also due to their fighting styles. Bakugu is an all-rounder, capable of fighting at all ranges. Midoriya is close range, he had to use the robots to fight each other when his quirk wasn't up to the job. A clever tactic. Hmm. I see what you mean, but don't forget that punch Midoriya delivered, Hizashi mimicked the punch while Shoyuta watched, rolling his eyes. That's gotta put him on the same footing, power-wise with Bakugu. It's strange that he didn't use it before. He could have taken out more robots using that power, Shoyuta looked back to his notes. Yeah, but you saw what the kid looked like afterwards. Sure he was still moving, god knows how, but you can see why he didn't want to pull that move sooner. Would have tapped out of the exam pretty quickly. I think it was smart to keep it hidden. Keep it hidden, Shoyuda hummed in thought. I saw his folder, there was no mention of that being a form of his quirk. Hizashi shrugged, you know how quirks are. They can, you know, update themselves to the situation. Maybe the stress of the zero-pointer and seeing someone in danger triggered another part of his quirk. Shoyuda supposed it wasn't out of the realm of possibilities, but it was something. That needed monitoring. I can't let him use that power if he has no control over output. Hizashi brought him out of his musings again, anyway, both seem like great kids to have in your class. He nudged his shoulder. What is it? You have that look on your face that something is still troubling you. Shoyuda himself couldn't put a finger on it. I don't know. I just have a feeling that both of those are going to be a never-ending headache for me. Hizashi laughed loudly, even when his quirk was turned off, his voice was still booming. Several people turned to look at them before they went back to their discussions. I think you'll be in for a bit of excitement. 
The pro hero said, slinging an arm over Shuda's shoulder. Izuku had run all the way to the beach once he received All Might's text telling him to meet him. Yagi san, he shouted as he ran up to the hero and stopped just in front of him. The hero dusted himself off from the sand Izuku had kicked up and handed him a newspaper that had previously been sticking out of his trouser pocket. Izuku read the headline of one of the pages, Mystery of the Seaside Park Cleanup. Now the place is a hot date spot, Izuku smiled. It was nice to see people appreciated what they did, even if they didn't exactly know it was him who did it. He hesitated then lowered the paper as something jogged his memory. How long have you been in town? My mum said she was coming to this beach earlier today, All Might coughed, BLD spurting through his clenched teeth. Izuka narrowed his eyes, enough about that now. Don't you want to discuss the exam? The hero shifted awkwardly, dabbing the BLD away with a tissue he'd taken from his pocket. I was surprised to hear that you've been made a teacher at Yui. Izuku handed back the newspaper to the hero who pocketed it. I didn't think you'd be the teaching type. All Might quirked an eyebrow, Izuku stuck his hands up and waved them in defense, I didn't mean anything by that. Just that, you know, teaching me is one thing but a whole class of kids with quirks. And with your condition, Izuku gestured to All Might's current form. I told the academy about my predicament a while back, but haven't breathed a word about it to anyone else, minus you and a few others close to me. The idea was to have Yui notify me on the chance they found me a suitable successor. Izuku looked down and fiddled with his fingers. That's right, he said he'd been searching for a successor for a long time, he was planning to choose among the students. Izuku looked up when he felt a heavy hand land on the top of his head and ruffle his hair. The hero looked down at him with a soft smile. I know what you're thinking, but I chose you. If you must know, Yui did suggest a few students to me but none of them inspired me like you did. The hero removed his hand from Izuku's head and stepped back. One for all. Just one punch or kick is all it takes to wreck my body. I thought I'd built it up enough to handle it, Izuku looked up to the hero who grimaced slightly. It's to be expected. You went into that exam with no knowledge on how to use that quirk, mainly my fault for not giving you some information on it, the hero rubbed the back of his head awkwardly but even if I had given you some info, you still wouldn't have been able to control it straight off the bat. Like any quirk, it takes practice to control it. So, for now I'm stuck at all or nothing, Izuka sighed. The trick is adjusting. That sensation you felt using it at 100%, the memory of that sensation is key. It felt like water boiling in a pan, over spilling and hitting the flame, hmm, a bit low-key but defiantly your way of thinking, kid. If that's the metaphor we're using then you need to lower the flame on that pan. Lower the flame on the pan, Izuku said doubtfully. You can learn to tone down and adjust the power level. That should save your body the strain of using the full strength of the quirk. And, the more you build up the vessel, the more you can control the power within it, like this. To prove a point, All Might turned into his muscle form and gave Izuku thumbs up. Hey, is that All Might? Where did he come from? Izuku turned to see a couple that had been standing in the newly gazebo now pointing at the both of them. Uh oh. I guess that's the end of this meeting kid. Talk again soon. And with that All Might began to sprint away from the beach. Izuku was left standing there rubbing the sand that had been kicked up out of his hair. Izuku did you pack everything? His mother called out from the kitchen. Yes. Izuku shouted back. He did a quick sweep of his room, making sure he'd picked up everything he needed, then spotted his favorite book, his dad's favorite book. He quickly packed it into his backpack between some notebooks, before nodding satisfied. He closed his bedroom door and strolled to the front door, Izuku. He turned to see his mother smiling widely at him, good luck today, have fun and make friends. Izuku could feel his mother's pride and happiness radiating off her and it made Izuku feel the same. He nodded to her, smiled and left for the day. He made it onto campus and was grateful the bell hadn't rung yet. 1 a. Uh. Where's 1 a? This place is too big. He consulted a map on the wall and carried on down the corridor. 
one in 300 examinees make it in and only 36 passed. 18 kids to a class means only two hero studies classes. Izuku skidded to a halt in front of an overly large door with one A emblazoned on it. He hesitated outside of it, his hand resting on the handle. Please don't have kakan and glasses kid. Please say they're in 1B. Izuku took a deep breath then opened the door only to come face to face with the two people he didn't want to see. Don't put your legs on the desk. Don't you think that's disrespectful towards your classmates and the school? Bakugu brought his other foot up onto the desk and crossed them. No, as a matter of fact, I don't think so. Which middle school are you from anyway, you two bit extra? A private SCHM. I'm from Somme Junior High School. The name is Ida Tenya. Bakugu sat up at that. Somme. Well aren't you an elite? Seems you've given me a reason to f end you after all. A a reason to end me. What nerve. You want to be a hero. Izuku couldn't help a small laugh escape from his lips and the boy named Ida turned at the sound. Izuku, realizing the jig was up, came fully into the room and was approached by Ida himself. Hello, I'm Ida Tenya from Somei Dash, uh, yeah I overheard. Uh, I'm Midoriya Izuku. Nice to meet you, Ida, Izuku scanned the classroom for an empty seat to slink into but it seemed that Ida had more to say. Midoriya, I must hand it to you. You divined that actual nature of the practical exam, didn't you? I, was blind to it and completely misread you. I hate to admit it, but you were the better man. Ah, uh, I didn't realize points were gained from that either, Deku, Izuku couldn't help but tense at that name. He looked around Ida and spotted Bakugu scowling at him. Izuku, wanting to be polite opened his mouth readying himself to say hi, even if he didn't particularly want to interact with Kakan at this moment. Thankfully he found himself stopped by someone new coming towards the door. He could sense their emotions, excitement and nervousness and happiness rolling around. Izuku turned to the door and came face to face with the girl who he'd saved and who had saved him in turn. Ah. It's you curly-haired kid. I'm. Glad I found you. Izuku couldn't help but stare at her, she looks amazing in the school uniform. He shook his head to clear his thoughts and blushed slightly. You made it, just like present Mike said you would. I asked him if I could give you some of my points but he said you didn't need them. That punch was out of this world, you know. She mimicked his punch from the exam before smiling brightly at him. Yeah, it was pretty girl. Pretty good. I mean pretty good. He coughed, feeling his face turning redder the more he spoke to her. She hadn't seemed to notice his slip of the tongue but was looking at him with bright eyes and a wide smile. He was glad at least one student was happy to see him in this class. Midoriya's acceptance into Yui was a surprise but a good one. Our little school with two heroes, how lucky we are. Izuku had wished the teacher hadn't said anything. Kimi turned in her seat and gave him thumbs up and a wink before turning around. Wow, can I get your autograph now? You need to date it and everything so it's legitimate for when I sell it for big bucks once you're the number one hero. They were walking down the corridor heading home. Shut up, Izuku bumped her shoulder with his own, I haven't even thought of a hero name yet, that's if I get far enough in the school year to pick one. Kimi moved to be in front of Izuku and started walking backwards, hands behind her back. Always the negative Nancy. There's a hero name for you. She laughed. You should be celebrating that you got into the top hero school in Japan, Midoriya, and looking at the good times ahead. She turned back around, and made her way down the stairs, Izuku followed dutifully behind her. I'll miss you, you know. She spoke up again as they exited the doors of the school and into the courtyard. I'll miss you too. He said smiling sadly at her. He could feel her happiness for him but sadness as well and slight envy. But, it's only different schools, not like I'm moving across the world. We can still meet up. Oh my, Midoriya Izuku are you asking me on a date? She laughed as his face turned pink with blush. Deku. They both looked toward Bakugu and then back at each other. I'll see you later. Izuku said to Kimi, 
she looked at Bakugu then back to Izuku before nodding and leaving the school grounds. Izuku turned to face Bakugu but saw him skulking off around a corner of the school, where they both knew it would be secluded. As soon as Izuku rounded the corner, Bakugu had gripped him by the collar of his school shirt and slammed him against the wall of the school. What dirty goddamn trick did you use to pass the exam, huh shithead? S stop, Izuku stuttered out as Bakugu slammed him into the wall again. The other boy let go of his collar and stepped back slightly, Izuku could smell the nitroglycerin in Bakugu's sweat building up. I was supposed to be the first to enter Yui from here. Me alone. You ripped my future glory to pieces and all over it. I told you not to show off or undermine me. Izuku looked at him, lost in the seething anger Bakugu was giving off. Bakugu reached forward and grabbed Izuku's collar again, this time Izuku grabbed Bakugu's wrists. Bakugu looked at Izuku's hands and immediately let go of his collar before taking a step back again. They stared at each other for what seemed like an eternity to Izuku, a standstill, both afraid of what one might do to the other. Why me? Izuku wanted to say to Kaken but he was afraid of the answer. Someone finally saw that I was capable of being a hero. He began. He felt himself swallowing back the tears, his throat burned with the need to cry but he would not show weakness here. Kaken. I've won the right. You, you can't stop me. I'm going to Yui. His quirk itched to be used, but Izuku would not turn to that, he wouldn't use hide on Kaken no matter how much satisfaction it would bring to him, if only for a moment. The girl was still standing in front of him, shooting off sentences a mile a minute, she's giving me a run for my money, a sound behind her caused her to stop talking and she turned to see what had made the noise. Izuku stared, baffled at what he saw. If you're gonna be hunting for buddies do it elsewhere. Tired was what this person was giving off and Izuku didn't need his quirk to sense that, the man was literally cocooned in a sleeping bag. This is the department of heroics. The man pulled out a carton of juice and it dry within a couple of seconds. Izuku and the girl stood back from the door as the man unzipped himself from the sleeping bag and came inside. Hmm, it took you lot 8 seconds to quiet down. Life if short, kids. You're lacking in common sense. He's our sensei. He looks kinda washed up, I'm your homeroom teacher, Aizawa Shoyuda. Pleasure meeting you. He moved into the room, around the students that were left standing up and rummaged around behind the teacher's desk. He stood up moments later with a box, a moment of digging later and Izuku watched in bafflement as Aizawa pulled out a P.E. uniform. Wear these, immediately. And then shove off to the P.E. grounds. Once everyone had been handed a uniform and led to the changing rooms, they met once again outside. Aizawa stood waiting for them, a bored look resting on his face. Izuku was aware that his fellow classmates all felt nervous and it made him uncomfortable. I was wondering when you lot would get here. We're starting with a quirk apprehension test. Izuku immediately felt ill at the thought of showing his quirk in front of all his new classmates. Of course he was aware Ida and Bakugu had seen Hyde, but only Bakugu knew that side of his quirk's true extent and he had been mercilessly called a villain for it. What about the ceremony and the guidance counselor meeting? The girl asked. I still don't know her name. If you want to be heroes, we don't have time for frilly niceties. You all understand the school's reputation for freedom on campus, Aizawa turned back to look at them, well, that freedom goes for us teachers, too. He led them off further down the field onto a throwing pitch. Softball pitch. Standing long jump. 50 meter dash. Endurance running. Grip strength test. Sustained sideways jumps. Upper body exercise. Seated toe touch, he looked at them all in turn, the country hasn't standardized those records or kept track of average performance levels. Not that it's the fault of anyone but the Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology. He pointed at Bakugu then at the circle next to him. Bakugu, please stand in that circle. Izuku watched as he stalked off to stand where Aizawa had pointed to. How far could you pitch a softball in middle school? 67 meters. The boy replied wrinkling his nose slightly. 
Aizawa chucked a softball that Bakugu caught easily. Try using your quirk this time around. As long as you don't exit the circle, anything you do is fine. He stepped back then, away from the circle, don't hold back. A smile crept onto Bakugu's face and Izuku swallowed back his nerves at seeing that smile. You got it, he said stretching slightly before he shouted over the explosion's die. Izuku watched as the ball shot up skywards, a trail of smoke indicating its path. Wind whistled around him before calming down again, he could just make out the smoke trail of the ball descending. At a sudden beeping sound, Izuku looked over to see Aizawa looking at a small object in his hand before noting down whatever it said. Before anything else, one must know what they're capable of. He showed them Bakugu's score, 705. 2M. Izuku stared at the number wide-eyed. This is a rational metric that will form the basis of your hero foundation. His classmates broke out into excited babbles, awesome, that looks like fun. 705 meters. That's unreal. The spiky-haired redhead shouted out. Izuku could see the smirk Bakugu wore at the compliment. Eight trials. All this is so sudden. I don't want to use hide so early on. I don't want them to be afraid of me on the first day, it looks fun, you say. Izuku was drawn out of his thoughts by Aizawa speaking. So, you were planning to spend your three years here having a good OL time. What happened to becoming heroes? Izuku could feel amusement coming from his teacher. All right then. In that case, new rule, the student who ranks last in total points will be judged hopeless and instantly expelled. Izuku immediately covered his mouth to stop himself from being sick. The sudden wave of fear and anxiety that washed over him from his fellow classmates surprised him. Are you okay? The girl asked him, noticing Izuku's reaction. He nodded to her, swallowing back the nerves. Aizawa ran a hand through his hair, revealing more of his face, especially his eyes. Our freedom means we can dispense with students as we please. He smiled widely, welcome to your first day in the Department of Heroics. Isn't it unreasonable to expel someone on the first day? Ida spoke up. The world is drenched in unreasonable things, but it's our jobs as heroes to reverse it and restore reason. Aizawa replied, looking at them all in turn. From now on, for the next three years all you can expect from your life at Yui is one hardship after the next. Aizawa quirked a small smile, this is plus ultra. I expect you to overcome these trials and climb to the top. He walked away then, gesturing for them to follow. Bakugu was only a demonstration, now we will begin the real trials. He stopped in front of a running track, 50 meter dash. Get to the starting line then, and I expect full use of your quirks. Izuku felt his stomach churn, I can't come last here, I don't need to win just to not come last. He looked around and saw his class preparing and he realized he needed to do the same. Okay. I turn into hide, run as fast as possible then SWCH out before people notice anything major and I say something I might regret. Izuku lined himself up in between the gravity girl and the spiky redhead. He cleared his mind and then flicked, what he always thought of being an invisible SWCH, into hide. Although he was grateful he no longer felt his classmates' emotions he was horribly aware of how strong some of their hearts were beating, the smell of sweat already perspiring from some of them and the rumbling of engines which he knew must be coming from Ida. He positioned himself, readying for the starting gun, breathing in and out with his head bent down so not to make eye contact with anyone. The gunshot sounded and he burst forward with ease, he thought about the beach with all might and running on it. This ground is a breeze to run on compared to the resistance of that sand. Three, four seconds, the machine at the end shouted as Izuku saw Ida pass the finishing line. Bakugu seemed to fly past him, leaving a hazy trail of smoke that got into Izuku's nose. For 13 seconds, the robot shouted as Bakugu passed the line. Third isn't a bad place to be, for 38 seconds, it read out as he passed over the line. Immediately he dropped his quirk and bent down leaning on his knees to catch his breath. He knew if he'd stayed in hide he'd be fine, the stamina of that side of his quirk meant that the run he just did would mean nothing but Izuku wouldn't have his classmates freaking out about him just yet. 5, 
51 seconds, Izuka recognized the boy with the strange belt over his stomach from the exam, he'd been running away from the zero-pointer at that time. Not graceful but a clever use of his quirk. Izuka grimaced as the boy wiped dust and grass off his P.E. uniform. 5, 58 seconds, Izuka looked as the frog-like girl hopped over the line. Others crept over the line in drips and drabs, he noticed the gravity girl's time as 7, 15 seconds. Trail after trial, Izuku activated his quick when necessary, only to maintain enough points so he wouldn't be low enough in the rankings to be considered for expulsion and making sure to keep his eyes downcast so no one could comment on them. After competing in the sideways jump, he went over to the table that had been set up at some point with bottles of water and fruit. He uncapped some water and took a swig, relishing the cooling of his throat. He capped the water and was about to head to the softball pitch for the fifth trial but stopped in his tracks. An uncomfortable feeling had been bothering him, he'd sensed it from the beginning of the test but everyone's nerves had overwhelmed him at the time, but now it was clear. He swiveled his head until he located the source of these emotions, disgust, annoyance, apprehension. Izuka's quirk flared under his skin at what he saw, the boy with the odd hair, Mineta he recalled, was standing in front of the group of girls from class. Although Izuku couldn't hear exactly what was being said, he didn't need to as their emotion said it all. As he neared them the conversation became clearer and so did the looks upon their faces, awkwardness. It sure is hot today, I mean you all look pretty hot and red in the face, maybe you should pour some water on yourselves to cool down. You know, those uniforms really fit you all well. And before Izuku even recognized what he was doing, He'd strolled up to them, and bent down to Mineta's height so his face was only visible to him. He placed a hand on his shoulder and changed into Hyde. Well, hello little boy. Are you lost? Wah, what are you talking about? Mineta stuttered out, his eyes going wide at Izuku's new look. Izuku could see himself reflected in the boy's eyes and smiled widely. I just assumed you were a child with the way you were acting. I apologize he said faking the humor in his voice and the smile on his lip. He let both drop as he continued, only, I saw you harassing these girls, no don't interrupt me, you were verbally harassing them in what were misguided comments on their bodies. Not very heroic. He gripped tighter on Mineta's shoulder, no, not even decent. Wh who are you to lord around telling people what's what? Mineta stuttered out. He tried to move Izuku's hand from his shoulder, but Izuku held on tighter, his eyes narrowing at Mineta's actions. Why, I'm Midoriya Izuku, that's who, and for added emphasis Izuku sent a shock of pain into the boy's shoulder. Mineta hissed. And I know who you are, you're a mixed drink. One part Napoleon complex, two parts pervert. Mineta for his part had turned pale, sweat now dripping down his face. Stop that, I don't want to smell you, Izuku said wrinkling his nose, now obviously I'm going to report this, but I suggest you make the situation easier on yourself by apologizing. He closed his eyes and breathed in and out to calm himself down before opening them again. He dropped his quirk then stood up, looking at the three girls who'd been watching the interaction with great interest. Hi, I'm Midoriya Izuku, it's nice to meet you all. He smiled at them, moving around Mineta to block their view of him. The girl in the middle with the high ponytail nodded, it's nice to meet. You Midoriya. I'm Yairozu Momo. She held out a hand which Izuka shook. I'm Jiro Kyoka, the girl to her right said, unfolding her previously crossed arm and offered a hand for Izuku to shake as well. And the last girl, who Izuku could only make out due to her uniform, seemed to be making a waving action by the way her uniform moved, I'm Hagakure Toru. We should probably head to the softball pitch now. Yairosa said, as they started moving around the baffled Mineta, and towards where the rest of the group was. She leaned closer to Izuku, thank you. We didn't want to cause trouble on the first day with one of our classmates, Izuku turned to look at her, she was looking down, fiddling with the end of her t-shirt. You shouldn't feel like you need to be nice to anyone who treats you like that. Be weird, be rude. She laughed at that and Izuku smiled. Nice of you to join us, Aizawa said, looking at them before turning back to the person standing in the center of the circle. Now, Eurarika if you'd please throw the ball. 
I finally know her name, Izuku thought then laughed as Aizawa showed everyone the score, an infinity sign. Infinity. Holy cow she got an infinity. Izuku smiled at the warm feeling of joy that radiated off Yurarika. Midoriya, if you'd step up for your throw please. Aizawa chucked Izuku the ball. On closer inspection he finally understood how they were collecting the readings, the ball seemed to have a strap embedded around it with sensors. Okay, so how am I going to play this? I could throw it in hide form but it won't make it as far as others would have thrown it. He passed the ball back and forth from hand to hand as he thought, one for all is my best bet to get a decent score but can I control it enough not to shatter my arm? It could put me out of business for the rest of the trials. He decided one for all was his best bet but remembered All Might's words, I need to control the flame. He readied himself, feeling his arm ache with the power of one for all, green veins of electricity already swirling around his arm. Focus. Focus. He pulled his arm back, feeling his muscles straining under the movement, and just as he went to throw everything seemed to shut down. He turned off one for all and let his arm slump, and was horribly aware of the lack of emotions he could feel. It felt empty, quiet. He couldn't think properly and turned to Aizawa looking for answers. I erased your quirk. He said calmly. His hair was standing on end, and his eyes glowing red. What Izuku had taken for a scarf was now swirling around him and now he could see a pair of yellow goggles slung around the hero's neck. It defies reason, how you manage to enter the academy with a part of a quirk that causes its owner such damage. Izuku blinked sluggishly, erased my quirk. Eraser head, can cancel out the quirk of whoever he looks at, but he only erased one of my quirks. Jekyll and Hyde. Izuku tried not to panic. From what I observed, you can't rein in your quirk's full power, meaning you can't use it efficiently at all. Who would come to save you if you crippled yourself again? Izuku tried to focus, but he felt wrong. How long had it been since he'd not felt the emotions of others? He'd never noticed what a comfort that side of his quirk had been until it was now taken from him. Not only that, he felt somewhat dimmer. The intelligence of Hyde and the emotions of Jekyll are what made him Izuku when neither side was on. To have them both taken away in this moment left him frazzled and confused. And no, I didn't, I ju dash, words couldn't quite form in his mouth but whatever he was planning to say was cut off when a scarf wrapped around him and pulled him closer to Aizawa. Whatever hopes you nursed about someone coming to rescue after you put yourself in a reckless position you can forget them. As you can see, nobody is in a position to come to your aid. Izuku looked beyond Aizawa and saw his classmates shifting awkwardly. You are like a certain insufferable hero who made a name for himself rescuing others from disasters all by himself. All Might, Izuku realized, that's was who he's talking about. You've his brute courage, I'll give you that, but if all you manage to do is end up in situations where you yourself require saving, then that power will not help you become a hero, Midoriya Izuku. Izuku suddenly grabbed his head, as his quirk returned to him, along with all the emotions of his classmates. I gave you back your quirk. Try to pitch the ball so we can get this over with. He looked up at Aizawa, but the hero closed his eyes and pinched the bridge of his nose, shaking his head. Izuku bent down and picked up the ball. He was angry with Aizawa and himself. He bit his lip, unsure of what to do now that he'd been scolded in front of the entire class. I'm used to people not wanting me places due to my quirk. But this is All Might's quirk he's slandering and I won't have that. He started up one for all again, building it to a crescendo in his index finger of his right hand. He watched as the green sparks swirled and jumped from his hand. I may not know how to control this quirk just yet, but I'll be if I don't put my all into it. He pitched the ball, sending it flying with the extra burst of one for all behind it. The pain that exploded from his finger was monumental but an easy SWCH into Jekyll meant that he felt nothing. He stared at the finger bending it without feeling anything, Sensei, I can still move, he said smiling at his teacher. The reader beeped and Aizawa showed him the score, 705, 3M. I beat Kaken. Izuku turned just as Bakugu came exploding his way onto the pitch. What is this, Deku? Explain now, Shitrag. 
His hands, crackling with explosions and smoke, almost came into contact with the Zuku but were stopped by the white scarf. Tsichti. I can't move, what's with this cloth? Aizawa pulled Bakuga back, it's my special, capturing weapon, a steel wire alloy woven with carbon nanofibers. He yanked Bakugu backwards until he was once again standing with the rest of the class. You kids, don't make me use my quirk so much. Aizawa said pinching the bridge of his nose and making his capture weapon unwind from a still seething Bakugu. Midoriya, can you continue with your hand like that? Izuku looked at his swollen purple finger, misshapen at the joint from the break, he could bend it with no pain, though he knew he could be making the injury worse. Yep, I can continue. He gave a thumbs up and walked off the pitch, standing next to Yurarika. Are you really okay? Yurarika asked him as Yairozu stepped into the circle to throw. You look different when your quirk is on. Softer somehow. Ah, I'm okay. I'll keep this side of my quirk on a little longer to absorb the pain. Yurarika her head to the side in thought, so Izuku explained further. Instead of the pain being concentrated in my finger, I can absorb and distribute it around my body, store it away sort of. When I think I've absorbed enough I can SWCH it off. Hmm. So once you turn your quirk off you won't feel any pain in your finger. Yep, to an extent. He smiled at her, but for now, I think I'll carry on with the trials in this form. The trials continued. A few of his classmates commented on his new look, which Izuku took in his stride. Better green eyes with no pupil than black eyes without any iris demon eyes as Kakan would call it. He was mindful of Bakugu, stalking him like cat readying to pounce on him when the chance presented itself, but Aizawa was also aware and kept them moving from trial to trial. When it came to the endurance run, Izuku managed to even outrun Ida, considering he couldn't feel his muscles aching. He could happily keep running until Aizawa told him to stop. That's very impressive, Midoriya. Ida complimented him. What in benefit of your quirk, to never tire. Izuku shrugged his shoulders at the compliment, I can't stay in this form forever, I'll need to change soon. Change into hide, the backlash to using Jekyll was when he absorbed too much pain, it needed to be released, much like steam coming from a kettle in those situations. It happened rarely that he involuntarily turned into Hyde but it wasn't unheard when his body could no longer store pain and it needed to be used. His quirk would activate on its own, Izuka likened it to a survival instinct, his body trying to expel the toxin that was pain. Right, it's time to present the results. Aizawa spoke passively for something that could result in the expulsion of a student. I'm not first, I know that much, but I wonder who's in last place. I won't bore you or myself with your scores as the whole expulsion thing was a lie. The class immediately broke into chatter but a cough from Aizawa brought them all back to silence. It was a logical ruse to pull out your best performances. Come on guys, use your brains, of course it was just a ruse. Yairosa said, shaking her head slightly at how gullible they had all been. With that, it's over. Your curriculum sheets are back in the classroom so give them a once-over. Aizawa said, handing out a scorecard to each student. Lastly he came to Izuku, Midoriya, he stood in front of him, holding out his card which Izuku took and looked at briefly before staring up at Aizawa, go to recovery girl and have that finger healed. Izuku nodded but hesitated, Aizawa waited, knowing that he had something to say. I need to tell you about an incident I was a part of today but I don't want to have the others get in trouble for it. He rocked side to side, shifting his weight from one foot to the other in his nervousness. Shoyuta rubbed his eyes with the heels of his hands. He wasn't surprised that he'd given one of his students the boot out of his class and the school, but was surprised with Midoriya's honesty in the situation. A good kid, he stood up from his desk then, shoving a few odd papers into the desk drawer and locking it before leaving the classroom. He had been impressed with the kids in his class, Hizashi was right I have a good bunch this year. He was especially intrigued by Midoriya and his ability to reign in the quirk so much, granted a piece of his body still broke, better a finger than an arm and two legs, Shoyuta made his way down the stairs and along the corridor, hoping to leave for the day without running into anyone. But, it seems Midoriya and Bakugu have history and from Bakugu's reaction it's not a pleasant one. 
Shoyuda knew he'd have to dig out their files again, tomorrow's problem for tomorrow's me. As he rounded the corner he was aware of heavy footsteps. Aizawa, you liar. He closed his eyes and breathed in deep, Lord give me strength. He then turned around to face the person who'd called him. Oh, it's all might. So you are watching, I take it. You must be free, then. I, he watched as the hero seemed to fluster for a moment before continuing. I had no classes to teach today. Merely orientating myself with the school and staff and their methods of teaching. Hmm, was all Shoyuda could bring himself to reply. He really just wanted to go home and feed the cats, maybe rest a bit before heading out for the night. A logical ruse. April Fools was a week ago, you know. Shoyuda would have taken this conversation for a scolding but he knew he had the upper hand in experience in teaching at this school. You expelled an entire new class of first graders last year, and I expelled one of my own today. He stopped All Might before he could say any more. If this is what you may have overheard me telling Midoriya on the softball pitch you can calm down. Shoyuda sighed, annoyed that he even had to explain himself. I can kick anyone out that I believe will drop below this academy's standards, Midoriya is not exempt from that. A hero that causes more harm than hope is a shoddy hero. He held up his hand to stop All Might from speaking, I know a lot of people are oddly invested in this kid due to how he acted in the entrance exam, but that's precisely why I scolded him and gave him something to ponder. He can't expect to throw that kind of power around and expect someone to clean up the mess, especially if that mess is his own body. He ran a hand through his hair before letting it drop to his side, now, if you don't mind I'd like to head home. Ah, you felt it too. Midoriya's raw potential. All Might said, smiling widely at him. Shoyuda turned and started walking, he has an above zero chance. All healed. Recovery girl said, turning Azuka's hand over so she could deposit some sweets into his palm. He popped one into his mouth and looked around the room, his quirk off. Thank you for healing me. I know I probably shouldn't have carried on in the trials with the way my finger was, yes, you should have come to me straight away, so you'll have to accept the scars on that finger now for your ignorance. Izuku wiggled his finger, staring at the scars in the harsh fluorescent light of the nurse's office. You didn't come here when you broke it due to your quirk, correct? Izuka nodded, absorbed the pain so I could carry on. And you can absorb the pain of others as well. Izuku nodded again. You'd make a good rescue hero, but not if you break all your bones beforehand. If you keep getting injured and use up too much of your body's energy to regenerate, you'll just end up dying anyway. Gotta go some way, though. He said cheerily, giving recovery girl finger guns but stopped at her scowl. There will come a time when you won't be able to rely on my quirk, young man. Please, be careful going forward using your quirk. Izuka nodded, picking up his backpack before standing up and bowing his thanks and leaving the nurse in the office. He shouldered his backpack and made his way out of the school, finding it easier to navigate his way out of the school than in. All Might, Aizawa and Recovery Girl, they've all warned me that I need to get a grip on one for all. I can't go on like this getting injured all the time. In his musings, Izuku had already made it to the school gates, exhaustion seeping into his bones from the day's events and recovery girl's power. Is your finger healed? He shook himself out his stupor and smiled at Ida as he walked in time with him. Oh, hey Ida. Yeah recovery girl fixed me all up. Right as rain now. That's good. Ida paused and Izuku waited for him to carry on, knowing that more was playing his mind by his emotions. I have to say, he began, Aizawa-sensei really got me. I'd actually thought so this is what the highest academia is like, now I see how a teacher can encourage through deception. I thought Ida was scary and snobbish but he's just an honest person. Hey there. Hey. You too. Izuku and Ida paused their walking and turned to see Urarika racing to catch them the up. You headed towards the station. Wait for me. Izuku couldn't help but smile at her. You're that, infinity girl. Ida asked Urarika. She beamed. Izuku felt his chest warm with the overflowing happiness that radiated from her. 
Hi, she held out a hand to them both, I'm not sure I ever actually introduced myself. The day has just been a whirlwind. She laughed. I'm Urarika Ochako. You're Ida Tenya, she said point to Ida who nodded. And if I'm not mistaken. Midoriya. Deku. Izuku winced. Deku. He asked her tentatively. Ah. Wasn't that what that Bakuga kid called you? She put a finger to her bottom lip in thought. Oh, Izuku rubbed the back of his head, messing up his curly hair even more. Erm, um, actually my name is Izuku. Deku is just what Kakan calls me to, to what? To demean me, oh, so it's an insult. Ida said, a frown appearing on his face. Ah. For real. I'm so sorry. I didn't know that. Izuku could feel Urarika's embarrassment but it was quickly washed away in another wave of joy. But you know, I kinda like the name, Deku, for you. It gives me a sorta, never give up, vibe, you know, she said smiling, punching a fist upwards in the air. I've never thought of it like that, he mumbled. I kinda like it. Turning it against Bakugu in a positive way. Yeah. Urarika said, jumping up and down to show her enthusiasm. Midoriya, are you sure? It is an insult, Ida whispered to him. It's only an insult in the way someone wields it with their tongue. I'm reclaiming the word. His fist pumped the air as well. Well mum, I've made some friends like you told me to. He smiled as he walked to the station with Urarika and Ida either side of him. Today was a good day.